Hi there, beautiful day for fishing, isn't it? Yes, it's lovely out here. Did you catch anything good today? Oh, I caught some pretty decent fish, but I'm not here to sell them. I just wanted to chat about seafood. Of course, what's on your mind? I'm curious about the seafood supply at your restaurant. Do you have a lot of fresh catches? Absolutely. We pride ourselves on the quality of our seafood. We have a great relationship with local fishermen, so our supply is always fresh. That's impressive. How do you decide what to put on your menu? We try to keep a good variety. Of course, it all depends on what's in season and what's available. But we always have some kind of fish, shellfish, and other seafood options. Well, I have to tell you, I'm a big seafood fan, and I appreciate a good selection. I'll definitely have to come by and check out your menu. You won't be disappointed. Is there any particular type of seafood you're interested in? Honestly, I'm open to trying new things. I love classic dishes like lobster and shrimp, but I'm also down for some adventurous things like octopus or eel. Well, we have all of that and more. And if you come by at the right time, you might even catch one of our special dishes, like pan-seared scallops with a truffle butter sauce. Now you're really making my mouth water. I'll definitely be stopping by soon. Thanks for the chat. Anytime. And if you happen to catch anything extra special on your next fishing trip, don't hesitate to bring it here. We'd love to cook it up for you. Hi B, I heard we'll be working together on implementing machine learning in our smart grid. I'm excited to get started. Hey there A, it's great to meet you. Yes, we have a fantastic opportunity to optimize power usage and reduce waste. Exactly. I think we can use machine learning to analyze historical data and find patterns in consumption. And we could use that information to forecast demand more accurately and prevent blackouts. Yes, and we could also fine-tune the distribution of electricity to focus on areas with higher usage. Right. And we can train algorithms to automatically adjust energy flow based on real-time data from sensors. Sounds like a plan. But do you think we have enough data to train the models? I think so. We can start by collecting data on weather, usage patterns, and energy production. Agreed. It's amazing how data is becoming more and more important in the energy industry. Definitely. And with the advancements in AI technology, we can create a more sustainable and efficient energy system. I'm excited to see our project in action. Who knows, we might one day be powering entire cities with smart grids. That would be amazing. Let's get to work. Hi there. My name is A, and I'm a photographer. It's nice to meet you. Hi, A. I'm B, and I'll be your tour guide today in Kyoto's Arashima. That sounds great. I'm really excited to take some amazing landscape shots today. What can you tell me about the history and culture of this area? Well, Arashima has a long and storied history. It was once a popular retreat for the imperial court during the Heian period. That's interesting. What about the cultural attractions in the area? There are quite a few famous temples and shrines here, like the Tenryuji Temple, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Wow, that's amazing. I'll definitely have to get some shots of that temple. Absolutely, it's a must-see. And make sure you take the time to walk around the bamboo forest. It's a popular photo spot. Oh, yes. I've heard about that. It looks so serene. It really is. And when you're ready for a break, we can stop at one of the local restaurants and try some delicious traditional Japanese food. That sounds like the perfect way to end the day. Thank you so much for your recommendations. My pleasure. It's always great to share the beauty and culture of this area with others. I couldn't agree more. Let's get started on our adventure. Hi there, I need to change my flight to New York. Hi, sure thing. Can you please give me your booking reference number? Sure, it's ABC 123. Great, thanks. Can you tell me the reason for your change in plans? Yes, unfortunately, my pet iguana needs a medical procedure and I need to postpone my trip. Oh no. I hope your iguana gets better soon. Let me check what options we have available for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. I can see we have a flight available next month. Would that be suitable for you? Yes, that sounds perfect. Okay. I have changed your flight to the next available one. Please check your email for the confirmation and new ticket details. Thank you so much for your help. Is there anything I should be aware of for the new flight? Just make sure to double-check the flight details and show up at least two hours before the departure time. Also, don't forget to give your iguana an extra hug from me. Will do. Thanks again, you've been a wonderful assistant. No problem at all. Have a great day.
Hey, have you heard about the new iPhone coming out soon? Yeah, I have. But do we really need a new one? I mean, what can it do that the current one can't already? Well, for starters, the camera is supposed to be even better, and the battery life longer. Hmm, those do sound like good points. But what about the price? Can we really justify spending so much money on a phone? I see your point, but think of all the things we can do with it. It's not just a phone, it's practically a mini-computer. I guess you're right. Speaking of computers, have you heard about the new advancements in artificial intelligence? Yeah, I saw something about it on the news. It's a bit scary, though, don't you think? Like, what if they become smarter than us and try to take over the world? Haha, uh, I highly doubt that will happen. But I do think it's interesting to see how far technology has come. Imagine what our grandparents would think of all this. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. Hey, have you tried using virtual reality yet? No, not yet. I heard it's really cool, though. Have you tried it? Yeah, I did at a friend's house. It was insane. I felt like I was actually in a different world. Wow, that does sound pretty cool. I'll have to try it out sometime. Definitely. And speaking of trying things out, have you heard about the new self-driving cars? Yes, and honestly, the idea kind of scares me. I don't know if I could trust a car to drive me around without any human control. Yeah, I can understand that. But think about all the time it would save us if we didn't have to waste it driving. We could be so much more productive. I suppose you have a valid point. I'm still not sure I'm sold on the idea, though. That's okay, it's always good to have different opinions. But one thing we can both agree on is that technology is definitely advancing faster than we ever could have imagined. Absolutely. I wonder what advancements will come next. Maybe we'll even have flying cars one day. Haha, <laughs> who knows? It's always exciting to think about the possibilities. Hey, B. How's it going? Not too bad, eh? How about you? Can't complain. So, we're supposed to discuss some issues related to network security today, right? Yeah, that's right. I think our company needs to improve its network security measures. Definitely. We need to make sure all our confidential data stays secure. Agreed. I noticed that we have some outdated hardware devices that need to be replaced. Yeah, those old devices are more susceptible to security breaches. We also need to beef up our password policies. Absolutely. We need to enforce strict password requirements and educate employees on cybersecurity practices. And we should implement some security software to monitor our network activity and detect any anomalies. Good idea. I also think we should conduct regular security audits to identify any potential weaknesses. Yes, and we need to ensure that our employees are using secured connections, especially when working remotely. Totally. I think we should also consider implementing some two-factor authentication processes. That's a good idea. We need to ensure that only those authorized personnel are accessing our network. Exactly. We can also conduct some security training programs to educate our employees on security threats and how to prevent them. Yeah, that's a great idea. We need to make sure everyone is on the same page when it comes to network security. For sure. Let's get started on implementing these changes and make our company a safe and secure place for our data. Hey B, what's up? Have you heard about ISO 27001 firewall? Hey A. Yeah, I have. It's a security standard for information systems, right? You got it. It's all about protecting valuable data. I'm interested. How does it work? Well, it's all about controlling access to data. Only authorized people can get in. So that means no more online hackers trying to steal my information? That's right. No more worrying about cyber threats. That's awesome, but it sounds kind of complicated. It can be, but it's definitely worth it. Plus, there are companies out there that can help with implementation. Good to know. What kind of things need to be in place to meet the standard? There are a lot of requirements, but things like regular risk assessments, employee training, and incident response plans are key. Makes sense. Do you think any company can benefit from implementing the standard? Absolutely. Any company that handles sensitive information should be considering ISO 27001 firewall. Great point. Thanks for explaining all of this to me, A. Of course, B. Security is important and knowing about these standards can only help us in the long run. Definitely. Let's stay safe out there. Hey B, have you heard about ISO 27001 security testing? Yeah, but it sounds like a mouthful. 
What's the big deal about it? ISO 27001 is an international standard for information security management. It sets out requirements for a company's information security management system. Ah, uh, I see. So what's up with the testing part? The testing part is to ensure that the company's information security management system is effective enough to protect its sensitive data from potential threats. Got it. So, how do they test it? They conduct various tests like vulnerability assessments, penetration testing, and security audits to make sure that the system is secure. That sounds like a lot of work. It is, but it's worth it to keep sensitive information secure. Plus, passing the ISO 27001 certification can provide a competitive advantage. I guess that makes a lot of sense. Have you ever worked on an ISO 27001 security testing project? Yes, I have. It can be quite challenging, but it's also a great learning experience. And it feels good when you know you've helped protect sensitive data. That sounds like a fulfilling job. It is. And who knows, with the growing concern of cybersecurity, it might become a more in-demand job. True. Well, thanks for explaining all that, A. I'll definitely keep that in mind. No problem, B. Always happy to share some knowledge. Good morning, B. How are you doing today? Good morning, A. I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm doing great, thanks for asking. So, what do we have on the schedule for today? We need to finalize the presentation for our upcoming client meeting. I have some ideas that I think would make it more engaging. Excellent. I'm always open to new ideas. Let's hear what you've got. Well, I was thinking of adding some interactive elements like polls or quizzes to keep the audience engaged. We could also use some visual aids like infographics or videos. Those are great ideas, B. I like your creativity. Let's incorporate them into the presentation and see how it turns out. Sounds good. I'll work on creating those elements and send them to you for review before we finalize the presentation. Perfect. While you're working on that, I'll take care of some of the logistics for the meeting like booking the conference room and ordering some snacks. That's great, A. You're such a helpful manager. Thank you, B. I'm always here to support you and make sure things run smoothly. I feel lucky to have such a supportive team, A. I'm learning a lot from you all. That's what we're here for, B. We want to help you grow and succeed in your career. I really appreciate that, A. Thank you for being such a great mentor. You're welcome, B. Now, let's get back to work and make sure this presentation is a success. Good morning, Mr. Educator. Thanks for coming to our school. We're excited to learn about agriculture today. Good morning, Farmer A. I'm happy to be here. Do you have any specific topics you want to cover? Yes, we were hoping you could teach us about sustainable farming practices. We want to make sure we're doing our part for the environment. That's a great topic. We'll talk about crop rotation, natural pest control, and using organic fertilizers. And we'll have a hands-on activity later. I'm sure the students will love that. We want them to learn practical skills they can use in their own farms too. Absolutely. And it's important to educate the next generation on agriculture. It's the backbone of the society. You're right. And with the global food demand rising, it's crucial for us to produce enough food sustainably. Exactly. And by using sustainable practices, we'll also be helping to preserve the soil and biodiversity. I couldn't agree more. We want to leave a healthy planet for our children and grandchildren to inherit. Well said, Farmer A. Let's get started on sharing our knowledge and working towards a better future. Sounds like a plan, Educator B. Thanks again for being here today. Hi B, it's great to see you. I'm excited to talk about how we can use natural language processing in our news reports. Hey A, thanks for inviting me. I'm thrilled to talk about this too. Let me start by asking you, how exactly can we use NLP to write news reports? Well, we can use NLP to extract insights from huge volumes of data and generate reports that convey key insights in a simpler and more readable format. That sounds really interesting. But won't the reports lack creativity if they are written by machines? Not really, we can always use natural language generation techniques to insert some creativity into the reports. Machines can come up with some pretty interesting wordings. Hmm, I see your point. But what about fake news? How will we ensure that automated reporting maintains the same standards of truthfulness as human journalism? That's a good concern. We can apply machine learning algorithms that detect fake news and alert human editors to review the content. That's a great idea. 
I'm sure our readers will appreciate getting timely and accurate news reports, especially in today's fast-paced world. Exactly. And with the rise of social media, we need to be more vigilant in ensuring that our stories are accurate and unbiased so that we don't contribute to the spread of misinformation. Agreed. And I think we can also use NLP to tailor our news reports to individual audiences, making them more relevant and engaging. Absolutely. NLP can help us analyze audience behavior to see what topics they are interested in and deliver personalized content that resonates with them. This discussion has been really insightful, B. I'm excited to see how our company can leverage NLP to improve our reporting. Same here, A. It's always inspiring to know that our work can make a positive impact on society. Hello there. I'm a food blogger and I'm excited to try the famous Swiss cheese fondue. Welcome to our restaurant. I'm Chef B, and I'm happy to prepare a traditional Swiss cheese fondue for you. Great. Can you tell me more about the ingredients used for the fondue? Of course. We use a mixture of Gruyere and Emmental cheese with white wine, garlic, and some cornstarch to thicken it. It smells amazing. Let's dig in. Here's your bread to dip in the fondue. Enjoy. Wow. This is so good. The cheese is creamy and rich, perfectly complementing the bread. I'm glad you like it. What would you rate it? I would give it a 9 out of 10. The only thing missing is some seasoning for a bolder flavor. Understood. We usually keep it mild for those who are new to Swiss fondue. Makes sense. Have you ever experimented with different cheeses or mix-ins? Yes, we sometimes add mushrooms, truffles, or even bacon to the fondue. It gives it a nice touch. That sounds amazing. I'll have to try that next time. Definitely. Thank you for trying our Swiss cheese fondue, and feel free to visit us again. Thank you, Chef B. This has been a delightful experience. I'll be sure to recommend your restaurant to my readers. Hi there, B. How's everything going on with the database management? Hey there, A. It's all good on this end. I've been keeping up with the regular maintenance of the database, but we did have a recent vulnerability scan that identified some issues. Ah, uh, I see. What kind of vulnerabilities were discovered? And have you taken any steps to address them? Well, the scan highlighted some weak passwords and outdated software versions, among other things. I've already changed the passwords and updated the software patches as necessary. Great job, B. It's important to stay on top of these things to prevent potential data breaches. Have you done any penetration testing to ensure that our security measures are strong enough? Yes, we did a penetration test last quarter, and everything came back clear. But I have scheduled another test to be on the safe side. Good thinking. It's always better to be proactive than reactive, especially when it comes to data security. Do you have any tips for me on how to improve our security measures? Sure thing, hey. Make sure to always keep your antivirus software up to date, disable unnecessary services, and limit user permissions to only what's necessary for their job functions. Thanks, B. I appreciate the advice. It's great to have someone as knowledgeable as you on the team when it comes to database management and security. No problem, hey. It's my pleasure to help out. Elevating security measures is a team effort, and we all need to pitch in to keep our data safe and secure. Absolutely. By working together and implementing these best practices, we can be confident in our security measures and protect our data from potential threats. Agreed. And don't hesitate to let me know if there's anything else I can do to help out. We're all in this together. Thanks, B. I definitely will. Keep up the great work. Hi there, welcome to the Darwin Visitor Center. How can I assist you today? Hi, I'm a tourist and I'm looking for information on what to do around here. Great, well Darwin has a lot to offer. What kind of activities interest you? I'm up for anything really, but I do love the outdoors. Then you must check out the Litchfield National Park. There are plenty of waterfalls and beautiful scenery to explore. That sounds amazing, how do I get there? You can either rent a car or book a tour. I highly recommend taking a tour, especially if you're not comfortable driving on the left side of the road. Good point. I'll definitely look into that. What else is there to do? The Mendel Beach Sunset Markets is a must-visit. It's a great place to grab some food, immerse yourself in the local culture, and watch the beautiful sunset. Sounds perfect. I'll add that to my list. Any other recommendations? Definitely take a harbor cruise. It's a great way to see Darwin from a different perspective and you might even spot some dolphins or turtles. Wow, I can't wait. Thanks for all the great suggestions. No problem. 
Do you need any help with accommodation or transportation? Actually, yes. Do you have any recommendations for budget-friendly accommodation? Yes, the Value Inn is a popular choice among backpackers and budget travelers. That sounds great. And what about transportation? There are a few options, such as hiring a bike, taking public transport, or using ride-sharing services like Uber or Ola. Perfect. That's all the information I needed. Thanks again for your help. You're welcome. Enjoy your stay in Darwin. Hi there. I see you have some business documents with you. Are you also here for a business trip? Yes, I'm an enterprise consultant. And you? I'm a senior consultant. We seem to be in the same field. That's great. Do you have a specific expertise or industry you focus on? Yeah, I mostly deal with retail and customer service. How about you? I specialize in human resources and organizational development. Interesting. Have you had any challenging clients lately? Oh yes, I had a client who had a very outdated management style. It was hard convincing him to modernize. I totally understand. It's not always easy to convince clients to adapt to current industry trends. Exactly. But when it does work out, it's extremely rewarding. Have you had any rewarding experiences lately? Yes, I recently implemented a customer feedback system for a retail client. It boosted their output and generated even more satisfaction for their customers. That's impressive. It's great to hear about the positive impact we can have on businesses. Yes, it definitely makes our job worthwhile. By the way, have you seen the new local cafes around? The coffee is amazing. I have not, but I'll have to check them out. Thanks for the recommendation. No problem. It's always good to unwind after a long day of work. Agreed. Speaking of which, do you have any plans for your free time during this business trip? I plan on exploring the local area and trying out some restaurants. How about you? Same here. I heard there's a great steakhouse in the city that I have to try. Sounds like a plan. It's always good to have some fun and relaxation outside of work. Yes, it's all about balance. Hey B, have you heard about ISO 27001 Virtual Private Network, VPN? Yes, I have. It's a set of guidelines for information security and connecting remote devices securely. That's right. It's one of the most widely used information security standards in the world. Interesting. So, how does VPN exactly work? A VPN provides a tunnel for data transmission, allowing secure access to internal resources by authenticating users and encrypting traffic. Wow, sounds complicated. Can I use VPN on my mobile phone too? Definitely. VPN software can be installed on your smartphone, tablet, or laptop. Gotcha. So what are the benefits of having VPN? VPN can provide secure access to corporate resources, allow remote employees to work flexibly, and keep sensitive data safe from cyber theft. That's really important. Is there any downside to using VPN? Well, there may be a slight drop in connection speed due to encryption and the distance of the server. But the pros outweigh the cons. Understood. Is there any way to check if my VPN is secure? Absolutely. You can perform a DNS leak test by checking if your IP address is masked, and you can also test for WebRTC leaks. Great advice. I'll definitely check my VPN now. Good idea. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Thanks, A. Hey. Your knowledge about VPN and information security is impressive. No problem, B. It's important for everyone to be aware of these things in today's digital age. Good afternoon everyone, and welcome to the Sydney Opera House Tour. My name is Emma, and I'm your guide for today. Is everyone ready to explore this stunning UNESCO World Heritage Site? Absolutely. I've been looking forward to this visit for months, ever since I booked my trip to Sydney. That's great to hear, B. Let's start with some basic facts. Did you know that the building of the Opera House started in 1959 and ended in 1973? Wow, that's a long time. I had no idea. Yes, it was a complex engineering feat at the time, involving over 10,000 people. But it was definitely worth it as the Opera House has become a signature landmark of Sydney and Australia. No doubt about that. What's your favorite part of the Opera House? Personally, I love the concert hall. It's the biggest venue in the Opera House, with over 2,500 seats. It also has one of the largest mechanical tracker action organs in the world. Oh, that sounds amazing. Can we see it up close? Unfortunately, not today, but I highly suggest you come back and watch a performance. 
It's truly a magical experience. I definitely will. What other shows do you recommend? Well, it really depends on your preference. There's a wide range of performances that cater to different tastes, from ballet to theater to rock concerts. Just check out the schedule online. Got it. What else should we know about the Opera House? One fun fact is that the roof of the Opera House is made up of over 1 million tiles that were imported from Sweden. That's amazing. And what about the sails? Ah, uh, the sails are actually made of fiberglass, not cloth. They're also self-cleaning, which is pretty impressive. Wow, you really know your stuff, Emma. Thank you for this tour. You're very welcome, B. I hope you enjoy the rest of your time in Sydney. Don't forget to take plenty of photos with the Opera House in the background. Hello, I'm the chef for tonight, nice to meet you. Hi there, I'm the bartender, pleasure to meet you too. So, what's on the menu for tonight? We have an extensive wine list, and I can also recommend some great cocktails to pair with your dishes. That's great to hear. I have some special dishes planned for tonight. I'm excited to try them out. What's the highlight of the menu? Our signature dish is the slow-cooked Wagyu beef, paired with a red wine reduction. Sounds delicious. I have the perfect wine to go with that. You know, cooking is an art, and winemaking is a science. We both have to work together to create the perfect culinary experience. I couldn't agree more. And the presentation is just as important as the taste. Right, it's like performing for an audience. We have to impress them with all our skills. Speaking of performances, do you have any funny kitchen mishaps you'd like to share? Oh boy, where do I begin? Once I accidentally put salt instead of sugar in a dessert. I still cringe at the memory. That's hilarious. I once poured gin into a martini shaker and it turned out to be vinegar. Laughing, I guess we all make mistakes sometimes. But that's why we're here, to learn and grow as professionals. Absolutely. Now, let's get back to making some magic in the kitchen and behind the bar. Sounds like a plan. Cheers to a great night. Cheers to that. Good evening, B. It's great to work with you again in this fine establishment. Hello, A. Yes, it's always a pleasure to work with you in the kitchen creating culinary masterpieces. Absolutely. I've heard we have some VIP guests tonight, so let's make sure to put our best foot forward. Of course, A. What wine would you recommend to pair with the dish you're preparing? Well, I'm making a pan-seared scallops and truffle risotto. I think a crisp white wine with a hint of minerality would balance the richness of the dish. Sounds delicious. I have just the right one in mind. By the way, how's your knife skills? Haha, <laughs> still sharp as ever. Why do you ask? I have a feeling the guests might request their steaks be cut in a specific way. Ah, uh, I see what you mean. No worries, I can handle it. Speaking of steaks, what's your specialty drink to pair with a nice ribeye? Well, I usually suggest a bold red wine, but since we are in Japan, I may turn to a local whiskey. That's a great idea. We have some top-notch whiskeys too. Say, have you tried that Japanese sake we got our hands on? Yes, I did. The daijinjo was especially smooth with a fruity aroma. The guests will surely appreciate it as a digestive. You have a good palate, B. Let's also not forget about the dessert. I plan on making a deconstructed matcha cheesecake. What would go well with that? For a dessert as elegant as that, I'd say a sweet dessert wine like a late harvest Riesling would be delightful. Brilliant choice. It's fantastic when our palates align. Absolutely, that's the key to a great partnership. Together, we make a mean culinary and bar duo. Couldn't agree more. Let's get started on these dishes and create an unforgettable dining experience. Sounds like a plan, eh? Let's get to it. Hey, have you seen the weather forecast for Cairns in Australia? No, I haven't. What's it saying? Well, it looks like it's going to be quite hot and humid over there in the next few days. Oh no, I hate the heat. Me too, but we can't let that ruin our trip. Have you thought about any measures to deal with the heat? Hmm. Maybe we could drink a lot of water and wear light clothing. That's a good start. We could also try to stay indoors during the hottest parts of the day. Sounds like a plan. Do you know of any indoor activities we could do? Actually, yes. The Cairns Art Gallery looks pretty interesting and is fully air-conditioned. That sounds perfect. What else do you recommend? Well, we could also take a dip in the hotel pool or visit the Cairns Aquarium. Those sound like great options. Thanks for the tips. No problem. 
We might as well enjoy ourselves, while we're there, even if it is hot. Agreed. I can't wait to see all that Cairns has to offer. Me neither. We'll just have to make sure we have plenty of sunscreen and hats on hand, too. Definitely. I don't want to come back looking like a lobster. Haha, <laughs> me neither. We'll make sure that doesn't happen. Hey B, have you ever thought about designing a chatbot with both speech recognition and natural language processing capabilities? Absolutely. I mean, those are the two big components that make a chatbot truly intelligent. Right. And it would be really cool if the chatbot could understand and respond to colloquial language, not just formal speech. Yes, exactly. We can use machine learning algorithms to teach the chatbot to understand different accents and speech patterns. And with natural language processing, we can teach the chatbot to understand the meaning behind what people are saying, not just the words themselves. Totally. We can analyze sentence structure and grammar to create more natural-sounding responses. Plus, we can add some humor to the chatbot's responses to make the conversation more engaging and enjoyable. Ooh, I like that. Maybe we can use puns and jokes as responses to certain phrases and questions. That's perfect. It'll give the chatbot some personality and make it stand out from other automated systems. And we can even incorporate some common phrases from pop culture to make it more relatable to different age groups. Yes. This is going to be the most exciting project yet. I can't wait to see how it turns out. Agreed. Let's get started and create the best chatbot ever. Hi B. How's it going? Not too bad, eh? Hey. I'm just trying to figure out how to make our smart traffic system a little smarter. Any ideas? Well, one thing we could do is incorporate real-time traffic data, like Google Maps. That way, we could suggest alternate routes to drivers who are stuck in traffic. That's a great idea. And we could also analyze traffic patterns over time to help city planners make better decisions about road construction and repairs. Exactly. And what about using sensors to detect when a car is parked illegally so we can send a ticket straight to the owner's phone? Ooh, I like that. And maybe we could use facial recognition technology to help police identify reckless drivers and issue tickets more efficiently. Nice. We could also use machine learning to predict traffic patterns and adjust traffic lights accordingly, so we can reduce congestion during peak hours. Brilliant. And what about using drones to monitor traffic flow and spot any accidents or other incidents? That's a great idea. And we could even use the drones to deliver emergency supplies to accident victims. Awesome. I think we've got a lot of great ideas here. Let's get to work and make this smart traffic system a reality. Good evening. How's it going, team? Hey there. All good. Just prepping for the dinner rush. Love the smell of seafood in the air. What's cooking? We've got some fresh prawns, crabs, and mussels that just came in this morning. Thinking of making a spicy seafood soup. That sounds delicious. Perfect for a chilly evening by the river. Speaking of the river, have you seen the view from the terrace? Yes, it's breathtaking. I think our guests are in for a treat tonight. Absolutely. And the dining area is all set up with candles and flowers. Great job, B. Your attention to detail is impeccable. Thanks, A. It's all about making sure our guests have a memorable experience. That's why you're the best seafood chef in the city. You flatter me, A. But I'm just doing what I love. And we love having you on our team. By the way, did you hear what happened yesterday? No, what's up? One of our customers caught a fish while dining on the terrace. Really? That's amazing. We should offer fishing as a new dining experience here. Huh. Maybe we should. Though I'm pretty sure the fish probably just got attracted to your cooking. Laughs, thanks, hey. But let's hope our guests don't hook their own dinner tonight. Chuckles, agreed. Well, time to greet our customers. Let's make tonight a night to remember. You got it, eh? Let's do this. Hey, B. How are you feeling about the upcoming show? I'm pretty excited, honestly. We've been rehearsing for weeks. Same here. I think we're really going to knock it out of the park this time. Yeah, I'm especially pumped for the new song we added to the set list. It's got such a fun beat. Definitely. And speaking of beats, have you been keeping up with your drumming exercises? Of course. I've been practicing like crazy. I don't want to mess up any of those complex rhythms. Haha, <laughs> good to hear. How about you, though? Have you been hitting those high notes? I've been trying my best. But I think I might need to borrow your vocal warm-up routine. Hey, no problem. 
We gotta make sure you hit that falsetto just right. Absolutely. Hey, have you heard from any of our fans lately? I'm curious to see if they're as pumped as we are for the show. I actually have. One person wrote in to say they've been playing our music nonstop to get ready. Wow, that's awesome. It's so cool to think about how our music can affect people like that. Definitely. And hey, speaking of cool things, did I tell you about the guitarist I saw on YouTube the other day? He was shredding like crazy. No way. What kind of guitar was he playing? Some kind of custom electric. But it got me thinking, maybe we should work on incorporating some more solos into our songs. Ooh, I like that idea. We could really give the audience a chance to see our individual talents shine. Precisely. Okay, back to rehearsing, we've got a show to rock. Good morning, B. It's great to be here at the site, isn't it? Yes, it is. This place has so much potential. So, what are your initial thoughts on the design? Well, I've been thinking about incorporating some modern elements into the design while still keeping it in line with the traditional architecture of the area. What do you think? I like the idea. It's important to keep up with the times, but also maintain the cultural significance of the location. Exactly. And what about the color scheme? I was thinking of going with a mix of muted earth tones to give it a more natural feel. That sounds great. It's always better to keep it simple rather than going for something too loud and flashy. Agreed. And what about the layout? Would you prefer a more open or closed concept? I think an open concept would be ideal. It would really allow for the natural light to flow into the space. That's what I was thinking too. I'm also considering adding some greenery here and there to really enhance the natural elements of the design. Yes, absolutely. A touch of greenery always adds a nice refreshing touch to any space. Well, I'm glad we're on the same page. I'm really excited about this project and can't wait to see it come to life. Me too. I have complete faith in your abilities as an architect, eh? This project is in great hands. Thank you so much, B. It means a lot to me. Let's get to work and create something that will truly stand the test of time. Hi there, can you recommend a delicious main course and a red wine to go with it? Of course, do you have any dietary restrictions or preferences? No, I'm pretty adventurous when it comes to food. Great, how about the grilled ribeye steak with a side of truffle mashed potatoes? And as for the wine, I suggest a full-bodied Cabernet Sauvignon. Sounds perfect. What about the other red wines? Is there anything else I should know about them? We have a Merlot that's fruity and smooth, and a Pinot Noir that pairs well with seafood or pasta dishes. Hmm, I'll stick with the Cabernet Sauvignon. By the way, what's your favorite dish on the menu? Honestly, I love our seafood linguine with clams, shrimp, and scallops in a white wine sauce. It's a crowd pleaser. Sounds delicious. I might have to get that as well. Oh, and do you have any desserts that you would recommend? Our signature dessert is our chocolate lava cake, it's rich and decadent. But if you're feeling light, we also have a refreshing fruit sorbet. I think I'll go for the chocolate lava cake, I have a sweet tooth. Thank you so much for your recommendations. My pleasure, enjoy your meal. Hey there, B. How's the filming going? Great, Director A. Getting into character and enjoying the scene. That's wonderful to hear. We've got a great team here, don't you think? Absolutely. From the art department to the camera crew, everyone's doing a fantastic job. That's music to my ears. So, any plans after we wrap up here? I was thinking of grabbing a cold one with some cast members. Care to join us? Ah, uh, I would love to, but I've got a script to revise for tomorrow's shoot. I hear you. Some of those dramatic scenes we shot took quite a bit of my energy too. Ha ha ha, I'm sure you burned some calories today. But all worth it for the sake of the art. Exactly, Director. And speaking of art, do you have any recommendations for the upcoming gallery show? Oh, there's a Salvador Dali exhibit that just opened. It's got some surrealism you might appreciate. Sounds like a must-see. Thanks for the heads up. Of course, B. Always happy to chat about the finer things in life. Now, let's get back to filming, shall we? Action. Hey B, I heard you're looking to develop a new retail application. What's the scoop? Yeah, we want to create an app that can integrate online and offline sales for our customers. Sounds interesting. Can you give me a bit more detail about what that looks like in practice? Sure thing. Essentially, we want our customers to be able to shop in-store or online and have a seamless experience between the two. Got it. 
And what kind of technology are you thinking about using for this application? We're considering using RFID technology to enable in-store tracking of purchases and then linking that to the customer's online account. That could definitely work. What about mobile payments? Yes, we want to incorporate mobile payment methods so customers can easily pay for their purchases either in-store or online. And what about the user interface? How do you envision making the in-store and online experiences consistent? We're thinking about using a single, unified interface for both online and in-store shopping that will give the customer a consistent experience across channels. That sounds like a good idea. And how will you manage inventory between the online and physical stores? We plan to use real-time inventory tracking so that customers can see whether the product is available for purchase both online and in-store. That's a great feature to have. Do you plan to have any personalized recommendations for customers using the application? Absolutely. We want to create personalized shopping experiences for our customers by analyzing their purchase history and providing recommendations based on their preferences. And what about security? How will you protect customer data and payment information? We plan to use encryption technology to protect all sensitive data and comply with relevant data protection laws. Great. It sounds like you've put a lot of thought into this. When do you expect the app to launch? We're aiming to have the app ready to go by the end of the year. Best of luck with the development. I'm excited to see how it all comes together. Thanks, A. I appreciate your help and input on this project so far. Hey, B. Have you noticed that our site has been loading slowly lately? Yeah, I have. We need to implement some kind of load balancing to fix the issue. Definitely. What options do we have? Well, we could use a hardware load balancer or a software load balancer. What about cloud-based load balancing? That's a good idea. We could use AWS or Azure to handle the load balancing for us. Sounds good. How do we set it up? We would need to configure our servers to send traffic to and from the load balancer. Would we need to create a new virtual machine to use as the load balancer? Not necessarily. We could use a load balancer service provided by AWS or Azure. That makes sense. How do we ensure that the load balancer is distributing traffic evenly? We can tweak the load balancer settings to evenly distribute traffic based on server load and traffic volume. That sounds promising. How do we monitor the load balancer's performance? We can use tools like CloudWatch or APM to track server health and uptime. Is there anything else we need to consider? Yes, we need to make sure our servers are optimized for the load balancer and that they can handle the increased traffic. Got it. How do we test the load balancer before deploying it to production? We can create a staging environment and use load testing tools like JMeter to simulate high traffic loads. Great idea. Anything else we need to keep in mind? We should also have a disaster recovery plan in place in case the load balancer fails or goes down. Hmm, that's a good point. How do we create a failover system? We could use multiple load balancers in different regions and configure our servers to fail over to another load balancer in case of a failure. That sounds like a solid plan. Thanks for your help, B. Anytime, A. Let's get to work and make our site faster and more efficient. Hey B, have you tried empanadas before? Yes, I have. I love the crispy crust and savory filling inside. Do you like them? Sure do. But have you tried the sweet version of empanadas? It's filled with chocolate and dulce de leche. No, I haven't. That sounds delicious. Have you tried it? Oh yes. It's a game changer. I usually have them for dessert. Plus, the flaky crust is the perfect complement to the sweet filling. I can imagine. Do you know where I can try it? Yes, there's a local bakery that sells them. We should go there one of these days. Awesome. Do they serve other flavors too? Definitely, they have a wide variety of empanadas. There's chicken, beef, cheese, and even vegetarian options. Wow, that sounds great. I'm a big fan of cheese empanadas. What's your favorite filling? Hmm, it's hard to choose. I like the beef and chicken ones, but I also like the ones with spinach and mozzarella cheese. I hear you. Empanadas are so versatile, you can pretty much stuff them with anything. Exactly. They're perfect for snacking, lunch, and even dinner. Plus, they're easy to eat on the go. That's true. I can see why they're so popular in Latin American cuisine. And you know what's even better? They're easy to make at home too. Do you want me to share a recipe with you? Yes, please. I'd love to learn how to make them myself. All right, I'll send it to you. Get ready to make some delicious empanadas. Thanks, hey. 
I can't wait to try it out. Hey B, have you heard of the ISO 27001 Intrusion Detection System, IDS? Yeah, I've heard about it. It's a security system that monitors and detects unauthorized access to network systems. Exactly. It's an effective way to prevent cyber attacks and keep our data safe. Well, I guess we all need to be more mindful of the security risks involved in our online activities. Agreed. Have you ever had any experience dealing with cyber attacks? Not personally, but I heard that it can be a real headache if your system gets hacked. That's why it's so important to have a reliable IDS system in place. It's like having a security guard at the door of your computer network. Yeah, it gives you peace of mind knowing that unauthorized access attempts are being constantly monitored and blocked. And it helps to prevent your sensitive data from getting into the wrong hands. Absolutely. So, do you know of any good IDS systems we could potentially use? Well, I've done some research and there are a few options out there. Have you heard of Snort or Suricata? Snort? Sounds like a funny name for a security system. I know, right? But it's actually one of the most popular open-source IDS systems out there. Interesting. What about Suricata? Similar to Snort, it's also an open-source IDS system with real-time traffic analysis and rule-based intrusion detection. Sounds like a good option. Do you know of any other systems we could compare them to? Yeah, there's also OSEC and Bro IDS. They're both highly regarded in the security community. Thanks for the suggestions. I'll look into those and compare them with Snort and Suricata. No problem. It's always good to have options when it comes to online security. Definitely. It's better to be safe than sorry when it comes to protecting our sensitive data. Absolutely. So, which IDS system do you think we should go with? Hmm, I need to do more research before I can make a recommendation. But I'm leaning towards Suricata because of its real-time traffic analysis. Sounds like a solid choice. Let's go with that then. Agreed. Thanks for your help on this, A. Eh? Anytime B. We all need to be vigilant when it comes to online security. Good morning, everyone. Today, we're here to discuss our company's strategy for the next quarter. Great to be here, COA. I'm excited about what we have planned. Glad to hear it. So, let's start with our target audience. Who are we aiming to reach with our products and services? Well, I think we should focus on the younger demographic. They're tech-savvy and always looking for the latest gadgets. That's a good point. And speaking of gadgets, what about our new product line? Do we have any updates on that? Yes, we've been working on some prototypes and they're looking really promising. I think they're going to really appeal to our target audience. Fantastic. And what about our marketing strategy? How are we planning to get the word out about our new products? I think we should focus on social media. We can collaborate with some influencers in our industry and really make a big impact. Good thinking. Now, let's talk about our budget. Are we going to have enough funds to execute our plans? I think we can make it work, but we might have to make some cuts in other areas. Understood. We'll take a closer look and see what we can do. All right, any other suggestions or comments before we wrap things up? Just want to say that I'm looking forward to seeing the results of our hard work. Agreed. I think we're on the right track. Thank you, everyone, for a productive meeting. Hey there. Are you ready for some fun in the sun? Yes, I definitely am. I've been looking forward to this all week. Great to hear. So, have you ever done any water sports before? No, this is my first time. I'm excited and a little nervous. No worries, I'm here to teach you everything you need to know. Let's start by getting you equipped with a life jacket. Got it. Safety first. Absolutely. Now, let's start with paddleboarding. Have you ever heard of it before? Yes, I have. It looks so cool. It is. It's all about balance and control. First, let's practice getting on the board without falling off. Okay, I'll try my best. Perfect. You've got the hang of it. Let's venture out into the water now. Wow, the water is so clear and beautiful. This is amazing. Yes, and the best is yet to come. Let's try paddling and steering the board. Follow my lead. Laughs, this is harder than it looks, but I'm determined to get it right. That's the spirit. You're doing great. Let's take a break and cool off in the water. Sounds good to me. Did you have fun? Yes, it was an incredible experience. Thanks for teaching me, coach. You're welcome. It was a pleasure working with you. 
who knows, maybe you'll become a paddleboarding pro one day. Laughs, maybe. See you next time. Hi there, B. What brings you to the art studio today? Hi A. I wanted to ask for your opinions on my latest painting. Do you have a few minutes to spare? Of course, I'd be happy to take a look. What inspired you to create this piece? I saw a beautiful landscape when I was on a hike, and I wanted to capture its essence on canvas. That's fascinating. I can see the earthy tones and the expanse of the horizon in your piece. How did you achieve those effects? Thank you. I experimented with a technique I learned in class the blending colors and using different brush strokes. It really paid off. You've created a visual story with this piece. It's almost as if I'm standing in the middle of the painting. That's what I wanted to achieve. But I still feel that there's something missing. I'm not sure what it is. Have you tried looking at it from different angles or under different lighting conditions? No, I haven't. That's a great idea. I'll try that and see if it helps. Also, remember that art is subjective. What appears incomplete to you could be perfect to someone else. Keep that in mind as you continue to create. You're right. Thank you, A. That's very helpful. My pleasure, B. Never stop exploring your creativity. That's what makes art so exciting. Good morning, chef. I'm glad you could make it today to try out our famous Swiss cheese fondue. Good morning, Mr. Swiss Cheese Merchant. I'm excited to try it out. I always loved experimenting with cheese and wine. Speaking of wine, we use only local Swiss wine to enhance the flavor of the fondue. It's a perfect match for our Swiss cheese. Oh, your Swiss cheese is so tasty. It's strong and nutty, just what I need for my fondue recipe. I'm happy to hear this. What type of fondue do you plan to create today? I plan to use white wine, garlic, and mushrooms to infuse unique flavors into the fondue. That sounds delicious. I can't wait to see how it turns out. Thanks, I'm feeling pretty confident. Do you have any other suggestions for me? You might want to try dipping in some crusty bread, potatoes, or vegetables. It adds variety to the dish. Great idea. I'll make sure I have those on hand. Do you have any tips for the best way to serve the fondue? Absolutely. Keep the fondue warm and melted by stirring it regularly over a low flame. That way, it stays smooth and silky. Excellent advice. I'll make sure to remember that. Thank you. You're welcome. It looks like we make a great team. Who knows? Maybe we'll come up with a new Swiss cheese fondue recipe together. Yes, that would be amazing. Who would have thought that a Swiss cheese merchant and a chef could team up like this? Sometimes the unlikeliest collaborations can create the most amazing results, right? Absolutely. Viva la fondue, I say. Cheers to that, chef. Let's get cooking. Hey, have you heard about the upcoming system upgrade? Yeah, I did. What do you think about it? I'm excited about it, but I'm a little nervous about maintenance. Oh, that's natural. But, with any upgrade, there may be a few unexpected issues. Definitely. What do you think is the most important thing to be prepared for before the upgrade? I would say to back up all of our important data, just in case something goes wrong. Excellent point. How about we also schedule some time for training to avoid getting lost in the new system? That's a great idea. The new features seem pretty cool. We wouldn't want to miss out on them. Yeah, exactly. Do you think the upgrade will take a long time? It's possible. I already asked our IT guy, and he said they would try to get it done as quickly and efficiently as possible. Good thinking. We shouldn't rush them, but maybe we could get some snacks for them to keep their energy up. Laughing, I'm sure they will appreciate that. Do you know what kind of maintenance would be required after the upgrade is complete? I'm not 100% sure, but I think we just need to keep an eye on updates in the weeks after. Got it. Do you think we should suggest any other solutions to our IT department? Maybe we can suggest a more detailed user manual and a help desk for any questions that may arise. That's a great idea. I want to make sure this upgrade runs as smoothly as possible. Me, too. It sounds like we're on the same page. By the way, have you tried the new coffee shop down the street? Laughing, I was wondering when you would bring that up. You know I'm always in for a good cup of coffee. Hi there, B. How's the delivery going? Hey, A. It's going pretty good, just delivered some delicious sushi to a customer. That's great. Did they seem happy with their order? Oh yeah, they were really satisfied. They even gave me a big tip. Nice. 
well, we definitely want to keep our customers happy. Absolutely. Speaking of which, I think I have another order coming in. Okay, let's check it out. What do they want? It looks like they ordered some Korean fried chicken and a side of kimchi. Yum, that sounds amazing. I might have to grab some for myself later. Can't blame you, eh? Our menu is really tempting. So true. Well, while you go deliver the food, I'll make sure everything is accounted for on our end. Sounds like a plan. See you in a bit. Just got back from the delivery. They love the food. Excellent, that's what we love to hear. And hey, I even got some exercise out of it. These deliveries are like my daily workout routine. Haha, <laughs> I can imagine. Maybe we should add delivery person to our list of job requirements. Who knows, it might attract some fitness enthusiasts. Well, as long as they can deliver the food with a smile, I'm all for it. You got it, eh? We'll make sure to keep the smiles and the delicious food coming. Good afternoon, how can I assist you today? Hi, I was just prescribed some medication and I wanted some advice on how to properly take it to avoid any adverse reactions. Absolutely. What medication were you prescribed? I was prescribed some antibiotics for a sinus infection. Great, antibiotics are effective, but it's important to follow the instructions carefully. Did your doctor provide you with any specific instructions or warnings? Yes, they told me to take the medication with food and to complete the entire course. Those are important instructions. Taking antibiotics on an empty stomach can cause nausea and vomiting. And completing the full course helps to prevent resistance to the medication. That's good to know. Are there any other things I should be aware of? Yes, it's important to avoid taking other medications with your antibiotics. This can affect how your antibiotics work and might even cause unwanted side effects. I didn't realize that. Thank you for letting me know. Additionally, if you do experience any side effects, like a rash or diarrhea, it's important to let your doctor know right away. I will definitely do that. Thank you so much for your help. You're welcome. Is there anything else you need help with today? No, that's all. Thank you again for your time. Of course, have a good day. Hey B, have you heard about our next assignment? Hi A. Yeah, I heard we'll be covering a news event together. That's right. We're going out to report on the latest breaking news story. And I'll be there to capture all the action with my camera. You know, sometimes I feel like you're the real star of our team. Ah. I'm just here to make sure we have some great footage to show our viewers. You definitely make my job easier though. I can just focus on asking the questions and getting the story. Actually, I think our teamwork is what really makes it work. We complement each other's strengths and weaknesses. That's a good point. I might not be the best photographer, but I know how to get someone to talk. And I might not be the best interviewer, but I know how to get the perfect shot. I'm excited to see what we can come up with this time. Maybe we'll have a scoop that nobody else has. Yes, let's aim for that. I'm ready for some adventure and a good story to tell. That's the spirit. We'll make sure we're both well prepared and make it a success. Sounds like a plan. Let's get to work and make it happen, eh? Let's go, B. We've got some news to cover. Hey there, B. How do you think we can improve our company's network security? Well, we could start by updating our firewalls and antivirus software. What do you think? That's a good idea, but we could also educate our employees to be more aware of phishing attacks and how to avoid them. That's definitely something we should consider. In fact, I've been thinking about setting up regular security training sessions for all staff members. Great. I'll help you put together the materials for the training sessions. Awesome. Another thing we could do is implement multi-factor authentication for all our systems. Yeah, that's a good way to prevent unauthorized access. We should also make sure our passwords are strong and regularly changed. Absolutely. I've seen some pretty weak passwords around here, like password 1234. We need to stress the importance of strong passwords. Agreed. We should also make sure we're using up-to-date encryption protocols. That's a good point. And we could also conduct regular vulnerability assessments to identify any potential weaknesses in our system. Yes, and we shouldn't forget physical security as well. We need to make sure our servers and other sensitive equipment are properly secured and inaccessible to unauthorized personnel. Definitely. And we could also consider using intrusion detection systems to monitor our network for any unusual activity. Sounds like we've got some great ideas. Let's get started on implementing these improvements. Yeah, I'm excited to see how we can enhance our company's network security. Thanks for your input, eh? 
no problem, B. It's always a pleasure working with you. Hi there. Good morning. Are you ready to work with me today? Yes, of course. I'm excited to work with a pastry chef, brewing coffee and making cakes. Great. Today, we are making fresh out of the oven cakes and lattes. Do you have any suggestions for the latte flavors? How about caramel and vanilla flavor? I think it'll be a perfect pairing with your cakes. Sounds delicious. Let's start baking the cakes. What are your favorite cake toppings? I love fruits, especially berries. But I also enjoy caramel sauce or chocolate chips. Perfect. We'll make a variety of cakes with different toppings. And for the latte, we can use frothed milk to make some beautiful latte art. I'd love that. I always admire how baristas create beautiful patterns with steamed milk. It's really fun to make different latte art patterns, and it makes the coffee experience more special for our customers. I completely agree. It's the little things that make a huge difference in creating a memorable customer experience. Absolutely. That's why we put so much effort into every detail, from the taste to the presentation. Speaking of presentation, how do you usually decorate your cakes? I like to keep it simple and elegant. Sometimes I add some fruit or chocolate on the top for extra flavor and texture. Sounds good. I'm excited to see how our creations will turn out today. Me too. It's always rewarding to see the satisfaction on our customers' faces after they enjoy our delicious cakes and lattes. Yes, it is. Let's get to work and make some amazing desserts and drinks. All right, let's do this. I'll show you some helpful baking tips along the way. Hi there, I'm a diver and I was wondering where I could find some great seafood in this area. Do you have any suggestions? Hey, good to see you. As a chef, I can tell you that the best seafood can be found right here in the fishing port. We have fresh catches coming in every day. That's great. What kind of fish are you usually able to get? We have a variety of seafood available, from tuna and salmon to swordfish and cod. It really depends on the season and what the fishermen have caught. I see. How do you cook your seafood dishes to make them taste amazing? We cook them using simple ingredients and techniques that accentuate the flavors of the fish. Grilling, poaching, or frying are some of the methods we use. Wow, that sounds delicious. Could you recommend me a dish to try? Sure, our specialty dish is the seafood paella. It's a classic Spanish dish that's made with fresh seafood and saffron-infused rice. It's definitely worth a try. That sounds fantastic. I'll definitely have to try it out. Do you have any tips for cooking seafood at home? Always buy your seafood as fresh as possible and handle it with care. Don't overcook it and keep the seasoning simple to let the natural flavors shine through. Thank you for the advice. I can't wait to try cooking seafood dishes at home. You're welcome. It's always great to see people experimenting with cooking and trying new things. Let me know how it turns out. Have you ever tried pau de queijo? No, I haven't. What is it? It's a Brazilian cheesy bread. You have to try it. Hmm, sounds interesting. I'm a big fan of cheese. Then you're going to love it. It's so addictive. Really? I don't want to get hooked on another food. Trust me, it's worth it. You'll thank me later. Okay, where can I find it? There's a Brazilian bakery near my house that sells them fresh. Fantastic. Let's grab some tomorrow. Great idea. But be warned, you won't be able to stop at just one. Challenge accepted. I'm ready for the cheesy adventure. Yes. I'm so excited for you to try it. Okay, but what do we eat with pau de queijo? It pairs well with coffee or tea. Or you can just have it on its own. That sounds like a perfect breakfast to me. It definitely is. You're going to love it, I promise. I trust you. Let's go get some. Can't wait. Good morning, B. How are you today? Good morning, A. I'm doing well, thanks. Just finishing up my coffee before we get started. Great to hear. I wanted to go over the schedule for the next week's livestock transport. We have a big order coming in from the neighboring town. Sounds good. What animals are we transporting? We'll be taking a mix of cows, pigs, and sheep this time. All healthy and ready for sale. Wow, that's quite a mix. I hope they all behave during the journey. Haha, <laughs> me too. We've made sure to load them all up with plenty of food and water to keep them content. That's good to hear. Speaking of food, have you tried the homemade pie at the diner down the road? It's a must-try. 
I haven't yet, but I'll make sure to stop by on our way back. Thanks for the recommendation. No problem. So, when do you want to start the transport? We'll need to leave early tomorrow morning to make the delivery on time. Are you okay with that? Absolutely. I'll bring along some of my favorite tunes to keep us entertained during the journey. Sounds good to me. And once we make the delivery, we can celebrate with some ice-cold lemonade. Now you're speaking my language. I have a feeling this is going to be a successful trip. Yes, I think so too. Let's just hope the animals agree. Thanks for all your help, B. No problem, A. Always happy to work with you. Hey B, how are you doing? Hey A, I'm good, thanks for asking. How about you? I'm doing fine. So, let's get down to business. How's the database management going? It's been a bit hectic lately. We've been dealing with some major issues. That doesn't sound good. What kind of issues are you dealing with? We've been experiencing slow response times and some database crashes. Hmm, have you tried optimizing the database queries? Yes, we have, but it hasn't been effective. What do you suggest? We could try implementing some caching mechanisms to reduce the number of database hits. That sounds like a great idea. How do we set that up? Well, we could use Radies as an in-memory data store to cache frequently accessed data. That's interesting. Have you worked with Radies before? Yes, I have. It's a great tool for caching and speeding up database performance. All right then, let's give it a shot. How do we go about implementing it? It's pretty simple. We just need to configure Radies as a cache layer between the application and the database. Got it. Anything else we need to consider? We'll also need to monitor Radies metrics to ensure it doesn't become a bottleneck. Makes sense. Let's get started on that. Great. And if we run into any other issues, we'll just have to stay calm and troubleshoot until we find the solution. Ah, uh, that's the spirit. Always good to have a positive attitude. Thanks, A. Let's get to work. Wow, B. You're really fast on the slide. I can barely keep up with you. Ah, uh, thanks, Dad. I love coming to this park to play on the slide. Me too. It brings back so many memories from when I was a kid. How about we switch things up and you try going down the slide backwards? Backwards? Are you sure that's a good idea? Of course. I used to do it all the time. Just be careful and hold on tight. Okay, here goes nothing. We. This is so much fun. See? I told you it would be a blast. You're a natural on the slide. Can we go on the swings next, Dad? Absolutely. I'll push you so high, you'll feel like you're flying. Yay! I can't wait. While we're waiting for our turn, how about we grab a snack from the snack bar? Good idea. I'm getting kind of hungry. What do you feel like having? The nachos or popcorn? Hmm, can we get both? Sure, why not? You only live once, right? Yes. This is turning out to be such a fun day. Agreed. Sometimes it's nice to just relax and enjoy the simple things in life. Like spending time with family. Exactly. And I'm grateful to have such an amazing daughter to share these moments with. Ah, uh, thanks, Dad. I feel the same way about you. All right, snack time's over. Let's go swing as high as we can. Yay! Let's go. Good morning, sir. How can I assist you today? Hi there. Can I order some room service for breakfast? Absolutely, we have a great menu. What would you like to have? Hmm, how about the classic American breakfast with eggs, bacon, and toast? Excellent choice. And would you like some coffee or orange juice to go with it? I'll have the coffee, please. Thanks. Not a problem. Your breakfast will arrive shortly. Is there anything else you need? Actually, do you have any recommendations for things to do in Las Vegas? Of course. Have you thought about visiting the Strip for some shopping or checking out a show? That sounds fun. Is there anything specific you recommend? Well, the Bellagio Fountains are always a hit, and the High Roller Observation Wheel has amazing views of the city. Oh, that sounds great. I'll have to check those out. Thanks for the suggestions. My pleasure. I hope you have a great time here in Vegas and enjoy your breakfast. Let me know if you need anything else. Hey B, how's it going? Not bad, hey. Just trying to figure out how to improve the user experience on this social media platform we're working on. Any ideas? 
Yeah, I was thinking maybe we could add some more interactive features to keep users engaged. That's a good point. Do you have any specific features in mind? Maybe we could add a messaging system so users can communicate with each other more easily. I like that. Do you think we should also add a news feed to give users a glimpse of what their friends are up to? Absolutely. And we could even add a search function so users can easily find specific friends or groups. Great idea. How about improving the overall design of the platform to make it more visually appealing? Yes, definitely. We could update the color scheme and add some more eye-catching graphics. I was also thinking we could improve the back-end infrastructure to make the site run more smoothly. That's a good point. We don't want users getting frustrated by slow load times or glitches. Right. And if we optimize the site speed, we can attract more users and potentially increase revenue. Speaking of revenue, maybe we could add some sponsored content to generate more income. That's a good idea. We could also offer premium features for a paid subscription. I like that. We could have a free version with basic features and a premium version with more access. And for the premium version, we could even offer perks like exclusive access to certain events or discounts. That's a great strategy. We should focus on increasing user engagement and generating revenue simultaneously. Agreed. It's all about finding the right balance. Good morning. Your coffee is ready. Thanks. Wow, your latte art is incredible. Thank you. I take pride in it. Actually, I was thinking of making a dessert that complements your coffee. That's a great idea. What do you have in mind? How about a caramelized apple tart with a dusting of cinnamon? That sounds delicious. Let's do it. Do you have any tips on how to pair coffee with desserts? Absolutely. Sweet and creamy desserts go well with dark roast coffee, while fruity and light desserts go well with light roast coffee. I see. I'll keep that in mind. By the way, have you tried our new cold brew? No, not yet. How is it? It's smooth and rich. Want to try some? Sure, I'm always up for trying new things. Great. I'll make you a cup. This cold brew is amazing. Thank you. We use high-quality beans and slow brew it for a rich flavor. I love it. We should make a dessert that complements it too. How about a chocolate truffle with a hint of coffee? Perfect, let's do it. Cooperation is key here in Ekamai. Agreed. Our customers appreciate the seamless partnership between us. Definitely. Let's continue to impress them with our creations. Cheers to that. Here's to more delicious coffee and desserts. Day there, mate. Welcome to our little farm. Are you here for some fruit picking? Hi. Yes, I am. I've always wanted to try it, and I heard this is the perfect place for it. Oh, that's great. You came at a great time. Our peaches and apples are in season. That sounds lovely. Which one would you recommend for a first-timer like me? I'd recommend the peaches. They're easy to pick and super juicy. Yum. Count me in. So, how does this work exactly? It's pretty straightforward. We give you a basket, show you the right way to pick them, and you do the rest. Got it. Are there any tips you can give me? Definitely. Make sure you grab them gently to avoid bruising, and try to avoid picking unripe ones. Thanks for the heads up. So, how long have you been working here on this farm? Well, my family has been running this place for generations, so I grew up here. That's amazing. It must be so nice to live in such a beautiful place. Yes, it is. We have a beautiful countryside here in South Australia. I feel lucky to call this place my home. I can definitely see why. It's so peaceful out here. Yeah, we love it. It's a bit of a change from the city life, but it's peaceful and rewarding work. I can imagine. I think I'm ready to start picking. Thanks for your help and for sharing a bit of your story with me. No worries at all, mate. Enjoy your picking and make sure to try some of the fruit before you leave. Hey B, how's it going? Pretty good, thanks. How about you? I'm doing well, thanks. So, I hear we're working on implementing an automated software deployment process. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. It'll save us a lot of time and effort in the long run. Definitely. Do you have any experience with automation tools? Yeah, I've worked with a few different ones. Have you? A little bit, but I'm definitely looking to learn more. What do you think the biggest benefit of automation is? 
Well, besides the time and effort we save, it also reduces the risk of human error. Plus, it allows us to consistently deploy software across different environments. That's a good point. I also think it'll lead to better collaboration between different teams. Agreed. And it'll let us focus on more important things, like developing new features. Exactly. Hey, have you ever seen that TV show, Silicon Valley? They have some pretty hilarious scenes about automated deployment. Yeah, I love that show. Those guys make me glad I'm in DevOps and not trying to start my own tech company. Haha, <laughs> yeah, same here. Well, it looks like we have some work to do. Let's get started on this automation project. Sounds good to me. I'll pull up some documentation on our current deployment process and start mapping out how we can automate it. Hey there, B. How's it going? I'm doing great, A. Just trying to figure out how we can create a reliable electronic voting system for the government. Oof, that's no small feat. Where do we even start? Well, first things first, we need to ensure the security of the system. We don't want hackers getting in and messing things up. Yeah, definitely. Let's start by implementing some strong encryption measures. Agreed. We'll also need to establish a foolproof authentication system to prevent any unauthorized access. Hmm, what about the interface? We'll need to design something user-friendly so the voters won't get confused. That's a good point. We'll have to make sure the instructions are clear and concise. And what about scalability? We need to make sure the system can handle a large volume of voters without crashing. Right. We'll have to conduct load testing and make sure we have enough resources to handle the traffic. But what happens if there's a power outage or some other kind of system failure? We'll need to implement some kind of backup system to ensure that the voting data is preserved and intact. Got it. But what about the auditing process? How do we make sure that the votes are tallied accurately? We could use blockchain technology to provide an unalterable record of the votes. Brilliant. And we'll also need to have a team of experts monitoring the system for any irregularities or potential threats. Absolutely. We can't afford to take any chances with the security of the system. Well, this is certainly going to be a challenge, but I think we're up to the task. Agreed. With our combined expertise, we'll create a voting system that's reliable, secure, and easy to use. Can't wait to see it in action on Election Day. Me too. Let's get to work. Hey, what's up, B? How's the game development going? It's going pretty smooth, but I've been struggling with how to make the graphics run smoother. Yeah, that's always a challenge. Have you considered optimizing the code or compressing the graphics? Yeah, I've tried both, but I still can't seem to get the frame rate where I want it. Any other suggestions? How about using shaders to improve the quality of the graphics without compromising performance? Hmm, that's a good idea. I'll look into that. Hey, have you found any good resources for creating great UI design? Definitely. There are a ton of online resources and tutorials that can help you get started. Awesome, thanks. I've also been thinking about adding some interactive elements to the gameplay. Do you have any suggestions for that? You could try using haptic feedback or motion controls to enhance the user experience. Or even integrating augmented reality. Wow, those are some cool ideas. Do you have any experience with AR? Yeah, I've worked on a few projects that incorporated AR. It can be a bit tricky to get right, but the results are worth it. That sounds really exciting. I'll definitely look into that. By the way, have you tried the latest VR headset? Yeah, I have. It's pretty amazing how immersive the experience is. But it also requires a lot of optimization to ensure it's running at a good frame rate. Yeah, I've heard that. It's definitely something I want to explore further down the line. Thanks for the tips, A. Anytime, B. Let's get back to work and make this game awesome. Hey B, have you had your coffee yet? I feel like I need some caffeine to kickstart my brain this morning. Totally agree, A. Hey. I had my double espresso already, can't function without it. Okay, now let's tackle the system issues. Have you checked the logs for any errors? Yeah, I found some unusual logins from a suspicious IP address. Do you have any idea how that could have happened? Maybe someone tried to access the system using a brute force attack. We need to beef up our security measures. Good idea. Maybe we could start with two-factor authentication. And some proper password policies. I mean, who still uses password as their password? Tell me about it. By the way, I heard you're into gaming, eh? What's your favorite game? Yeah, I am. I recently started playing Animal Crossing. It's super chill and helps me relax after work. 
I'm more into first-person shooters. Have you tried playing COD? Yeah, I played it before, but I'm terrible at it. I prefer games where I don't have to be competitive, you know? That's understandable. Hey, I just got an idea. We could set up a gaming night for the office. I'll bring the snacks, you bring the games. Haha, <laughs> that sounds awesome. Let's plan it for next month. Great, can't wait. Now, let's get back to those system issues. Do you have any other ideas? Well, we could also set up some extra monitoring and alerts for suspicious activities. And let's make sure our system is always up to date with the latest patches and updates. Sounds like a solid plan. Let's get to work, partner. Good morning, dear. What do you want to have for breakfast? Good morning, mom. Can we have pancakes and bacon, please? Sure, I'll start preparing them. Can you help me by setting the table? Yeah, sure, I'll also make some fresh juice. That's amazing. You're becoming quite a chef, huh? Ha uh, not really. I just love cooking with you. You know what, after breakfast, maybe we can do some gardening? That sounds fun. I've been wanting to plant some flowers too. Great, let's do that then. Oh, and we also have to do the laundry. Okay, I can fold the clothes when they are done. Perfect. You're such a big help around the house. You're welcome. I'm just glad I can assist you. Speaking of helping, have you decided which charity we should donate to? Yeah, I think we can donate to the animal shelter. What do you think? I think that's a wonderful idea. We can go there next weekend and make our donation. Yay! I'm excited for that. I love spending time with you, Mom. Ah, uh, I love spending time with you too, sweetie. You make doing house chores a lot more fun. Haha, uh, thanks, Mom. You always know how to make everything enjoyable. Hi there. Are you enjoying your visit to the museum? Yes, it's fascinating. I'm learning so much about Australian culture. That's wonderful to hear. As a tour guide, I always love seeing visitors engaged in exploring our exhibits. I was wondering if you have any recommendations for must-see exhibits? Absolutely. If you're interested in Aboriginal culture, the Indigenous Art Gallery is a must-see. And if you want to learn more about early Australian settlers, the Immigration Museum is worth a visit. Thanks for the suggestions. I'm definitely interested in learning about the different cultures that make up Australia. That's fantastic. We have quite a diverse history here. Have you heard of the Eureka Rebellion? No, I haven't. What's that? It was a protest by gold miners against unfair working conditions back in 1854. It's a really interesting part of Australian history. Wow, I had no idea. I'll have to check that out. Definitely. And don't forget to stop by the science and technology galleries. They're full of interactive exhibits that are fun for all ages. Sounds like a blast. Thanks for all the recommendations, A. No problem, B. It was my pleasure to help you explore the museum. Have a great rest of your visit. Hello there. Are you enjoying the view of the volcano eruption? Oh, hi. Yes, it's absolutely amazing. I've never seen anything like this before. I'm glad you like it. This is one of the most popular attractions in the park. Yeah, I can see why. The lava flow is just mesmerizing. You should come here during the evening. The red glow of the lava against the dark sky is simply breathtaking. Really? I'll definitely keep that in mind. Have you always worked here? No, I started here just a few months ago. But I've been living in Hawaii for a while now. Lucky you. This place is paradise. It really is. I love the diversity of cultures and traditions here. And the food, of course. Yes. I've been trying some local dishes and they're delicious. Do you have any recommendations? You should try poke bowls and shave ice. They're must-tries when you're here. Sounds great. I'll definitely try them. By the way, did you know that volcanoes are actually good for the soil? Yes, they are. They create nutrient-rich soil, which is great for farming. We actually have some amazing farms here in Hawaii. That's interesting. I didn't know that. There's a lot to learn about Hawaii. It's a fascinating place with a rich history and culture. I can tell. I'm having a great time here so far. That's great to hear. Let me know if you need any recommendations or tips during your stay. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Hi there. Are you interested in buying a house in the Gold Coast? Yes, I am. 
Do you have anything in mind? Sure thing. I have a beautiful beachfront property that I think would be perfect for you. That sounds great. Can you show me the place? Absolutely. Let's head over there now. It's just a few minutes away. Wow, this place is amazing. I love the ocean view. Glad to hear it. It also comes with its own private beach access. That's fantastic. What's the price range for this property? It's listed at $1.5 million, but I can try to negotiate a better deal for you. That's a bit outside my budget. Do you have anything more affordable? Of course, we have a variety of options available. How about a cozy little bungalow with a garden view? That sounds nice. Can we go take a look at it? Sure thing, let's head over there now. It's only a short drive away. This place is adorable. And it's within my budget. I'm glad you like it. It's a great little starter home with a lot of potential. I think I'll take it. How do we proceed? Great. We'll get all the paperwork started and make sure everything is taken care of. Thanks so much for your help. I couldn't have done this without you. My pleasure. It's always a joy to help people find their perfect home. Hi there, B. Nice to meet you. So, I heard that we're going to build a robust enterprise information system, is that right? Yes, you heard it correctly. It's a challenging task, but with the right team and resources, we can make it happen. Absolutely. As a software architect, I suggest that we start with a strong foundation, using the latest technologies like microservices, containers, and cloud computing. Makes sense. But as a database administrator, I also believe that we should focus on data security, backup, and redundancy. You're right. What about data analytics? I think it's essential to extract valuable insights from the information we collect, right? Agreed. And with a proper database structure and data warehouse, we can provide relevant and accurate reports to our stakeholders. Nice. I love how we share the same vision. How about we work hand in hand, maximizing our skills and experiences to make this project successful? Sounds good to me. Let's integrate our expertise and start designing an enterprise system that can improve the company's productivity and efficiency. And let's not forget to have a little fun while we're at it, B. Let's celebrate small victories and enjoy the process. Absolutely. Whenever we overcome a challenge, I suggest we have a well-deserved happy hour. How's that for a plan? That's perfect. Count me in. Let's grab a drink and chat more about our progress once in a while. It's a deal, eh? I'm looking forward to working with you. Let's make this enterprise system rock. Hi there, my name is A, and I'll be your photographer today. Hi A, I'm B, and I'm excited to shoot with you. Great. So, what's the concept for today's shoot? I was thinking something bright and colorful to capture the Miami vibe. Perfect. How about we try some shots with you in a flowy sundress against the backdrop of the ocean? Sounds like an amazing idea. I love the beach. Great, let's start with some poses that really show off the movement of the dress. Okay, how about I walk towards the camera with my dress flowing behind me? Yes, that's perfect. And don't forget to smile and look straight into the camera. Got it. How do the shots look so far? Beautiful. The colors of the dress and the ocean really pop in these photos. I'm glad to hear that. How about we switch to a more serious, sultry pose? Sure thing. Let's try some shots with you lying on the sand with the sun setting behind you. I love it. This is turning out to be an incredible shoot. Agreed, it's always a pleasure to capture such a stunning subject in such a stunning location. You're making me blush. But seriously, you're a super talented photographer. Thank you, that means a lot coming from someone as beautiful as you. Ah, uh, you're too sweet. Shall we wrap this up? Yes, let's end with some playful shots of you jumping in the air against the backdrop of the ocean. Sounds like a perfect way to end this shoot. Thanks for such a wonderful experience, eh? No problem, B. It was a pleasure to work with you. I'm looking forward to the next time we can collaborate together. Hey B, have you had a chance to check out that new smart home system our company is developing? Yeah, I have. It looks pretty cool. The software team seems to have done a great job. Thanks, we tried our best. But we need your expertise to help us with the hardware integration. Sure thing. What devices are you thinking about connecting to the system? We want to be able to control the lights, thermostat, and even the coffee machine through a single app. That sounds like a great idea. I can definitely help with the integration. And maybe we can think about adding a voice assistant to the mix. 
voice control would be awesome. How about we add some fun Easter eggs where the voice assistant tells a joke or sings a song? I love that idea. It will definitely make using the system more enjoyable for users. We can also include some fun trivia questions for users to answer. This is going to be the best smart home system in the market. Thanks for your help, B. No problem, A. I'm excited to work together on this project. Let's make it happen. Hey B, did you hear about the ISO 27001 password policy? Yeah, I did. It's all about keeping our passwords safe and sound, right? Correct. And it's important to follow it to maintain data security. Definitely, I wouldn't want anyone hacking into my account. Me neither. So, what are the key points of the policy? Well, we need to use strong passwords, change them frequently, and not share them with anyone else. That sounds easy enough, but I struggle to remember all my passwords. Same. But with a password manager, we can store them all in one safe place. Good idea. And what about the length of our passwords? They should be at least 12 characters long with a mix of uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, and special characters. Wow, that's quite a mouthful. I'll have to get creative with my password choices. Haha, uh, yes, maybe try using a favorite song lyric or quote. Just be sure to mix it up a bit. Got it. And what about sharing passwords with coworkers? We should avoid it as much as possible. Each person should have their own individual password for their accounts. Makes sense. We don't want to be held responsible for each other's mistakes. Absolutely. So, have you updated all your passwords yet? I'm on it. Can't wait to feel like a secret agent with all these complicated passwords. Haha, uh, it'll be worth it to keep our company's sensitive information secure. Hey there. How's it going? It's going well. How about you? I'm doing great. So, shall we start discussing the design for the e-commerce website? Sure, let's get started. What kind of design are you thinking about? I'm thinking of a clean and modern design. We should keep it simple. I completely agree. Simple designs work best for e-commerce websites. Yes, and we need to make sure that the user experience is smooth and easy to navigate. Absolutely. We don't want our customers to get lost on the website. Correct. We need to make sure that the website is user-friendly and easy to use. That's very important. What about the color scheme? For the color scheme, I'm thinking a combination of blue and white. It's clean and professional. That sounds great. We can also add some pops of color to add some personality. Good idea. Let's also make sure to have high-quality product photos. Yes, and we need to ensure that the loading speed is fast. Agreed. That's a key factor in retaining customers. What about the font style and size? The font should be easy to read and not too small, maybe something like Open Sans. I like that font. We should also make sure that the website is responsive on mobile devices. Absolutely. More and more people are shopping through their phones. Okay, let's start working on the wireframes and then move on to the design. Great. And don't forget, we need to add some engaging calls to action to persuade customers to make a purchase. Yes, we want our customers to have a positive experience on the website and keep coming back. Bingo. All right, let's dive right into it then. Hey there, B. I heard we have to optimize the resource allocation within the company. Any ideas? Hey, good to see you. Well, as a sysadmin, my first suggestion would be to start with the servers. Right, so we can increase the storage and speed up the retrieval process? Exactly. And then we can allocate specific resources, like memory and CPU, to different departments to keep them from slowing down other processes. Sounds like a plan. But we also need to make sure our software pipelines flow smoothly. True, true. Maybe we can automate some of the processes, while also ensuring that there are no compatibility issues between different programs. That makes sense. We also need to be mindful of our employees' needs, right? Definitely. We can make sure that all employees have the necessary software installed and that there are no roadblocks to productivity. Great idea. And we should make sure that our systems are safe and secure as well. Yes. We can enforce stricter security protocols and ensure that all employees are trained in basic security measures. Got it. You know, I'm thinking we should also make use of cloud services. Ah, that's a great idea. The cloud can provide the scalability and flexibility that we need to accommodate our growth. And we should also consider outsourcing some of the work to third-party vendors to free up our resources. Sounds good. 
It's all about balancing our resources across our internal systems, the cloud, and third-party vendors. Agreed. Hey, B, thanks for the brainstorming session. I'll get to work on organizing all these ideas. No problem at all, A. Always a pleasure working with you. Hi, B. How's your day going so far? Pretty decent, thanks. Just been focusing on setting up some automated tests for our latest software release. How about you? It's been good. Just testing out some new features and making sure everything works smoothly. Speaking of testing, I was curious about your automation process. Mind sharing some insight? Sure thing. Well, first I choose a suitable test tool and framework based on the project requirements. Then, I develop automated test scripts and execute them on a regular basis. It improves efficiency and accuracy. Interesting. I usually stick to manual testing, but I see the benefits of automation. Do you encounter any challenges with automated testing though? Of course, there are always challenges. One challenge is maintaining the scripts, especially if there are frequent changes in the software. Another is ensuring that the automated tests cover all possible scenarios. I see. I'm definitely learning new things from you. How do you choose the right test tool for the project? It depends on the project requirements and the complexity of the software. I usually evaluate the test tool's features and functionalities, scalability, and compatibility with the software being tested. That makes sense. Do you have any tips for someone who wants to learn more about automated testing? Yes. I recommend reading up on software testing best practices and attending training courses. It's important to keep up with the latest advancements in automation tools and techniques. Thanks for the advice. It's been great talking with you, B. Likewise, A. Let me know if you have any more questions about automation testing. Hey B, so what brings you here to discuss national security? Hey A, you know that cybersecurity is my thing and we need to make sure our country's secrets are safe. No doubt about that, but do you think the government can keep up with the latest threats? Sadly, I don't think so. Hackers are always one step ahead and we need to keep up with them. Yeah, that's true. But what do you think of our current security measures? I think they're outdated and need a complete overhaul. We need to invest in better technologies and training for our staff. That's a good point. But what about the hackers who are already inside? We need to detect and contain them before they cause any damage. Agreed. But how can we do that effectively? We need to monitor the network slash servers closely and have a response plan in place to mitigate the damage. Sounds like a solid plan. But what about social engineering attacks? That's a tough one. We need to train our employees to be cautious and not let their guard down. Yeah, that can be a challenge. But what about our critical infrastructure? Can we protect that? We need to make sure it is secure by implementing security measures from physical security to cyber defense. Absolutely. But how do we convince the higher-ups to invest more in cybersecurity? We need to make them understand the potential consequences of a breach and how it can affect not just the government but also the citizens. Good point. But can we ever be completely secure? Sadly, there is no such thing as 100% security, but we can always reduce the risks by implementing best practices and staying ahead of the game. I like your optimism, B. Let's work together to keep our nation safe. Absolutely, A. We've got this. Hey B, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks for asking. I heard we have a meeting today about protecting our company's network. Yeah, we do. We need to ensure our systems aren't compromised by hackers. Absolutely. Do you have any suggestions on how we can achieve that? Well, I was thinking of implementing a strong firewall system. That's a good idea, but we also need to make sure that our employees are aware of the risks and trained to follow best practices. Agreed. Maybe we can organize a company-wide training program? Sounds like a good idea. We should also invest in some top-notch security software. Yeah, that's a must. But even then, we need to be aware of phishing scams and other social engineering tactics used by hackers. You're right. Making sure our employees are aware of these threats is key to keeping our systems secure. Another thing we should consider is limiting access to sensitive information. Yes, we can give access to only those employees who need it to perform their job functions. Exactly. We should also regularly monitor our systems for any unusual activity. Good point. We can set up alerts for suspicious activity and investigate any anomalies. And we should make sure to keep our software up to date with the latest security patches. Absolutely. Outdated software can leave our systems vulnerable to attacks. So, what's our next step? 
Let's put together a detailed plan and present it to the management team. Sounds like a plan. We'll have to demonstrate the importance of network security and the potential consequences of a security breach. Yup, we can't afford to be complacent when it comes to our network security. Great talking to you, B. Let's get to work on that plan. Absolutely, let's do it. Hey, nice to meet you. I heard we're both working on developing an AI chatbot. Yes, that's right. We're aiming to develop a chatbot that has self-learning capabilities. Definitely, that would be the ideal goal. I specialize in data mining, so I can focus on training the chatbot with a large data set. That sounds great. I specialize in natural language processing, so I can work on improving the language understanding and generation abilities of the bot. Perfect. It's great to have experts in both fields. Do you have any ideas for training the chatbot? I think we can start by giving the chatbot a base set of responses and letting it learn from conversations with real people. Yes, and we can also incorporate machine learning techniques to help the chatbot adapt to the different nuances of language and tone. Absolutely. I'm also thinking about incorporating sentiment analysis into the chatbot so it can recognize and respond appropriately to different emotions. That's a great idea. Another thing we need to consider is ensuring that the chatbot is able to provide accurate and relevant responses. Yes, we can't have the chatbot generating nonsensical responses. We need to make sure that it has a good understanding of context and can generate appropriate responses. I think having a team of testers to evaluate the chatbot's responses would be helpful. That way, we can identify areas for improvement and make the chatbot more effective. That's a great idea. We can also monitor the chatbot's performance and make continuous updates to improve its abilities. Overall, I think our combined efforts will lead to the development of an intelligent, self-learning chatbot that can provide meaningful assistance to users. I agree. Let's get to work and make it happen. Hey, B. Can you give me a quick rundown of what's happening here? Sure, A. It looks like some local students are hosting a fundraiser to help clean up the nearby park. That's great. Do you think we can get an interview with one of the organizers? Definitely. Let me grab my camera and we'll see if we can catch one of them. Sounds good to me. Do you think they'll be receptive to an interview? I think so. I overheard one of them saying they were hoping to get some media coverage to spread the word about the event. Perfect. Let's see if we can make that happen. Hey, look over there. That must be one of the organizers. Shall we get closer? Yeah, let's go. Hi there, would it be okay if we ask you a few questions about your fundraiser? Great, thank you. So, could you explain to our viewers what this fundraiser is all about? That's wonderful. How can people get involved if they want to help out? Thank you so much for talking with us. We'll definitely spread the word about your event. Yes, and we're excited to see the positive impact you're making on our community. Hi there, I'm one of the food processing workers here. How's your day going? It's been busy, but good. I see you're hard at work processing those vegetables. Yep, we try to get them as fresh as possible for our customers. How's the produce been selling? Actually, quite well. A lot of people are interested in healthy eating, so we've been selling a lot of fruits and veggies lately. That's great to hear. I'm glad we can help people make healthy choices. Definitely. What's the most popular product you've been making today? Probably the prepackaged salad mixes. It's quick, easy, and healthy for people on the go. That sounds perfect for busy people. I might grab one for myself on my lunch break. You should. We have a lot of different options, so there's something for everyone. I'll definitely check them out. So, have you always been in the food industry? No, actually, I used to work in construction. But I wanted a change of pace and found this job. That's interesting. What do you like most about this job? I like being able to work with food and help people eat healthier. Plus, I enjoy learning about different foods and recipes. Sounds like you have a real passion for it. Do you have any favorite recipes you've learned while working here? Definitely. I love making roasted vegetable wraps with our fresh produce. It's easy, healthy, and delicious. Yum, that sounds amazing. I might have to try it out for myself. You should. And let me know how it turns out. I will, thanks for the suggestion. It's been great chatting with you. Same to you. Have a good one. Hey B, how's it going? How's our progress on the project so far? It's going well. We've managed to complete most of the tasks we've set for this week, so that's great news. That's fantastic to hear. So what's our plan for next week? 
For next week, we're planning to work on the back-end development and start building the database. Sounds like a plan. How many team members do we have working on the back end? We have three developers working on the back end and two UI slash UX designers working on the front end. Great. So how are we looking with our deadlines for the upcoming phases of the project? We're scheduled to complete the next phase a week ahead of schedule, so we have some breathing room if anything unplanned comes up. That's reassuring. Have you had a chance to review the feedback we received from our stakeholders? Yes, I've gone through it and it seems like they're pleased with our progress so far. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Do we need any additional resources for next week's tasks? We may need to bring on an additional developer to help with the back-end work, but we'll need to assess that further as we get closer to the deadline. Understood. Are there any challenges or obstacles we need to address? Not at the moment, but we'll need to monitor our progress and identify any potential roadblocks as we move forward. Okay, thanks for the update, B. Let's touch base again later this week to make sure we're on track. Sounds good, A. Thanks for checking in with me. Hi there. I'm A, the pastry chef. Nice to meet you, B. Hey A, I'm B, the mixologist. Great to meet you too. I heard you make some mean cocktails, B. What's your secret? Oh, just a dash of creativity and a pinch of good ingredients. How about you, A? What's your secret to making such beautiful desserts? Well, it's all about the presentation. I try to make each dessert look like a piece of art. And you definitely succeed. Your desserts are almost too pretty to eat. What's your favorite one to make? Hmm, tough question. But I think I have to say our signature matcha mousse cake. It's a crowd pleaser. I have to agree. It pairs perfectly with my matcha tea infused cocktail. Have you tried it? Yes, it's delicious. The matcha flavors really complement each other. What other cocktail and dessert pairings do you recommend? Our lavender gin cocktail and your lavender macarons are a match made in heaven. And for something a little different, try our yuzu sour with your citrus tart. Sounds amazing. I'll have to try those pairings myself. Definitely do. Oh, and speaking of trying things, have you ever thought of making any alcoholic desserts? Actually, yes. I've been experimenting with some recipes incorporating different types of liquor. Do you have any suggestions? How about a whiskey-infused caramel sauce for your apple pie? Or maybe a cognac glaze for your chocolate cake? Those are brilliant ideas. I'll have to try them out and maybe even make them a permanent addition to our menu. I like the sound of that. Let's continue collaborating and making beautiful and delicious things for our customers to enjoy. Absolutely. Cheers to that, B. Hey B, how's it going? Hey A, I'm doing well. How about you? Can't complain. So, the reason why I wanted to talk to you is about our company's information systems. Okay, what's on your mind? I've been thinking about how we can make our systems more robust and reliable. That's definitely something we need to work on. What are your thoughts so far? Well, I think we need to start by improving the security measures that we have in place. Maybe enhancing our firewalls and access controls. Yes, that would help. We also need to make sure our databases are properly backed up and regularly maintained. Good point. And let's not forget about having contingency plans in case of any disasters or emergencies. Absolutely. We should also focus on improving the user experience so that our clients and employees find our systems more user-friendly. That's a great idea. And while we're at it, we should make sure our systems are integrated and can communicate with each other seamlessly. Agreed. It's important that all components work well together. Speaking of components, do you think we should invest in more powerful hardware to support our systems? It's certainly worth considering. But we need to make sure we're not wasting resources on unnecessary upgrades. That's a fair point. We should also look into incorporating more automation to reduce manual errors. Definitely. And let's not forget about investing in training programs for our employees to ensure they know how to use the systems correctly. Right. And let's make sure we have a proper maintenance schedule in place to keep everything running smoothly. Sounds good. But one thing we need to keep in mind is the cost of all these improvements. Do we have the budget for it? Hmm, that's a valid point. We should look into cost-benefit analyses to determine the best course of action. Agreed. But overall, I think we're on the right track in improving our enterprise information systems. Definitely. Thanks for your insights, B. Let's continue working on this and see better results soon. Absolutely, let's get to work. Hi B, have you ever designed a dynamic web page before? Yes, I have. 
Why do you ask? I am curious about how we can make a website that has good performance. Well, we need to make sure the code is optimized and that our page loads quickly. That sounds technical. Do you think we need to hire more developers? Not necessarily. We can use some tools that help with performance, like minifying our code and caching our assets. Hmm, sounds interesting. What about the design? How can we make it more engaging? We can use animations and interactive features to make the website more fun to use. That's a great idea. I also think we should consider the user experience. Yes, we need to make sure the web page is intuitive and easy to navigate. Do you think we can use a content management system to simplify the process? Absolutely. But we need to make sure it doesn't affect the performance. Got it. I am excited to see the final product of our collaboration. Me too. Let's make sure we optimize everything to create a great dynamic web page. Hi there. Thanks for picking me up. No problem at all. Where are you headed today? I'm going to Sydney. Gonna visit some friends and do some sightseeing. Ah, uh, I love Sydney. Have you been before? Yeah, a couple of times. But there's always something new to see and do. Absolutely. I've been driving in this city for 10 years and I still discover new things all the time. Wow, that's incredible. Any hidden gems you can recommend? Well, if you're into hiking, you should check out the Blue Mountains. The view is spectacular up there. That sounds amazing. I'll definitely add it to my list. And if you're a foodie, you can't miss the fish and chips at Doyle's on the beach. Oh, I love fish and chips. Thanks for the tip. No worries. And if you're feeling adventurous, you could give surfing a try at Bondi Beach. Laughs, I'll leave that to the professionals. Laughs, fair enough. Well, we're almost there. Have a great time in Sydney. Thanks so much. You've been a great help. My pleasure. Enjoy your trip. Good morning. It's great to see you here in church today. Good morning, Pastor A. Thank you for having me. I always love coming to this beautiful church. Yes, it's a very special place. So, how has your week been so far? It's been busy, but good. Work has been hectic, but I try to take a few moments each day to pause and reflect. That's great to hear. It's important to make time for ourselves and for prayer. Definitely. Speaking of prayer, I was wondering if you could offer some guidance on an issue I've been struggling with. Of course, I'm here to help. What's been on your mind? Well, I've been feeling a bit lost lately and unsure of my purpose. I just don't know what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. That's a common feeling, but remember that you are here for a reason. You have unique talents and abilities that can make a difference in the world. Thank you, Pastor A. That's a reassuring thought. It's my pleasure. Now, let's get ready for the service. Are you ready to sing some hymns and listen to the Word of God? Absolutely. I can't wait to worship with everyone. Great. Let's begin. That was a beautiful service, Pastor A. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. You're welcome, B. I'm always here to help guide you on your spiritual journey. I appreciate that, Pastor A. I feel more at peace after today's service. That's wonderful to hear. Remember to keep the faith and stay strong in your beliefs. I will, Pastor A. Thank you again for your guidance. You're welcome, B. Have a blessed week. You too, Pastor A. See you next Sunday. Take care, B. Good morning, B. How are you today? Good morning, A. I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing well too. So, I have your financial report here. Are you ready to go over it? Yes, I've been looking forward to it. Let's dive in. Great. Overall, your finances are looking pretty healthy. Your expenses are under control and your revenue is growing steadily. That's great to hear. I've been working hard to maintain a good balance. Yes, it definitely shows. And I have to say, your love for coffee seems to be paying off. Your coffee shop sales are through the roof. Ha uh, yes, I may have had a few too many cups this year. But I'm glad to see it's benefiting the business. Speaking of coffee, have you tried our new office coffee maker? It's pretty impressive. Actually, I haven't. But I do enjoy a good cup of joe. Maybe I'll give it a try later. Definitely do. And while we're on the subject of new things, have you considered expanding your business? We could look into some potential options. That's an interesting suggestion. I haven't thought much about it, but it could be worth exploring. 
yes, definitely. But for now, let's focus on maintaining your current successes. And keep up the good work. Will do. Thanks for all your help, A. Anytime, B. Have a great day. You too. Hi, I'm a vegetarian chef. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm a juice mixologist. Glad to meet you too. I'm so excited to try out this vegetarian restaurant. What's your favorite dish here? The beet avocado salad with a ginger lime dressing is my go-to. It's so refreshing. That sounds delicious. I personally love the mushroom risotto. The flavors are just perfect. Wow, that sounds amazing. I'll definitely have to try it. So, what kind of juice do you recommend? I'm trying to decide between the carrot orange and the kale spinach. I personally love the kale spinach. It's packed with nutrients and has a unique flavor. That sounds good. I think I'll go with that. Great choice. How about we share the rainbow spring rolls for our appetizer? Yes, let's do it. I love the colors and textures in that dish. Me too. And for our main course, I think I'll try the quinoa stuffed bell peppers. That sounds like a great vegetarian option. I might go with the lentil vegetable soup. Perfect. And we can finish off with some fresh fruit sorbet for dessert. Sounds delicious. I'm glad we're trying out this restaurant together. It's great to meet another food enthusiast. Absolutely. And it's even better that we're at a vegetarian restaurant. It's always nice to have more vegetarian options in the city. Hi there, how's your day going? Good afternoon, it's going all right. Thanks for asking. Where to? I'm heading to New York. Can you take me there, please? Sure thing. Have you been to New York before? Yes, a few times. I love the city. That's great to hear. Any plans for your trip? I'm really looking forward to visiting some of the museums and catching a Broadway show. Nice, that sounds like a lot of fun. Have you seen any good shows before? Yes, my favorite was Hamilton. Have you seen it? Actually, I haven't seen it yet. I've heard it's amazing, though. It definitely is. You should try to see it if you get a chance. I'll keep that in mind. So, do you have any other favorite things to do in New York? Oh, the food is incredible. I always make sure to hit up some of my favorite restaurants while I'm here. Yes, there's definitely no shortage of great places to eat. What's your favorite cuisine? I love Italian food. There's this little restaurant in Greenwich Village that I always make sure to visit. Sounds delicious. I'll have to try it out. We're almost there, by the way. Great, thanks for the ride. Here's your payment and a tip. Thank you. It was nice chatting with you. Enjoy your trip in New York. Hello there, I'm A, the fisherman. Nice to meet you, B. Hi, A. I'm the chef who will be teaching you the traditional seafood recipes. I'm excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. I've been fishing for years, but I'm always eager to learn new cooking techniques. Great attitude. So, let's start with the basics. Can you tell me about the fish you caught today? Sure thing. We've got some lobsters, shrimps, and scallops. They're fresh and ready to be cooked. Excellent choices. Let's start by preparing the lobsters. Do you know how to remove the meat from the shell? I'm afraid not. I usually just sell them off to the local restaurants. No worries. I'll teach you how to do it properly. And once we're done with the lobsters, we can move to the shrimps. Sounds good. I'm excited to learn. That's a good mindset to have. You know, I can tell you're passionate about fishing. What's your favorite fish to catch? Hmm, tough question. I'd say the bluefin tuna. It's a challenging catch, but it's worth it. Ah, uh, yes. The bluefin tuna is a delicacy that's highly sought after. Maybe we can incorporate it into one of our dishes in the future. That's a great idea. I'd love to learn more about that. It's settled then. For now, let's focus on perfecting these traditional recipes. Agreed. I can't wait to see what we can cook up together. Hi there, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, thanks for asking. How about you? I'm good too. It's a lovely day to be out here in the park, isn't it? Yes, it is. I was just thinking about our community and how we can work together to help improve the quality of life for our residents. That's a great idea. There are so many things we can do, like hosting events and workshops that promote healthy habits and lifestyle changes. Absolutely. 
We can also connect residents with resources in the community, such as job training programs and affordable housing options. Another idea is to create a community garden where residents can come together to grow their own fruits and vegetables. That's a wonderful idea. It would not only provide fresh produce for everyone, but it would also encourage social connection among neighbors. We can also look into organizing a neighborhood cleanup day to make our streets cleaner and safer. Yes, and while we're at it, we can educate residents on how to properly dispose of waste and recycle to keep our community clean for everyone. I love these ideas. We can definitely work together to make a positive impact in our community. Absolutely. It's important that we collaborate and use our strengths and resources to better the lives of those around us. I couldn't agree more. Let's start with planning these events and initiatives and see where it takes us. Sounds good to me. Let's put our heads together and make it happen. Hey B, how's it going? Not bad, hey. Just working on optimizing a product database structure. Ah, uh, I see. Do you need any help with that? Actually, yes. I was hoping to bounce some ideas off of you. Sure thing. So what's the issue you're trying to tackle? Well, I'm trying to figure out how to efficiently store all of our product data. Gotcha. And what kind of data are we talking about here? Everything from images and descriptions to prices and inventory levels. Wow, that's quite the undertaking. Have you considered using a NoSQL database to handle those data types? I have, but I'm not sure if that's the best option for us. What do you think? It really depends on the scale of your data and the complexity of your queries. But I think it's worth exploring. That's a good point. We definitely have a lot of different data points to work with. Well, another thing to consider is using data warehousing to optimize querying and reporting. That's a great idea. And we can use tools like Hadoop or Spark for processing large datasets. Exactly. And we should also make sure to normalize our tables for better data integrity. Right, and we can use indexing and partitioning to speed up our queries. Yes, and don't forget about caching to reduce database hits. That's a good point, eh? We definitely need to make sure our database is performing at its best. Definitely. And speaking of performance, have you heard of sharding? I have, but I'm not sure how it would apply to our situation. Well, if we have a lot of concurrent queries, sharding can distribute the load across multiple database instances for better performance. Hmm, I'll have to look into that further. Thanks for the suggestion, A. No problem, B. Always happy to help optimize our data systems. Haha, uh -huh, yeah. We like the dynamic duo of data. I like the sound of that. Let's go save some data. Hi there, B. How's your day going? Pretty good, A. Just working on setting up a new firewall on our network. That's great. I'm actually here to discuss some ideas for improving our overall network security measures. Perfect timing. What do you have in mind? Well, I've been thinking about implementing some multi-factor authentication methods for our users. Definitely a good idea. We've had some issues with weak passwords in the past. Exactly. And I also think we should start conducting regular security audits to ensure we're staying on top of potential threats. Agreed. It's important to stay proactive in this field. Oh, and have you heard about the latest phishing attacks targeting government agencies? Yeah, I actually attended a webinar about it last week. It's scary how sophisticated these attacks are becoming. Definitely. We should plan on conducting some user education sessions to help people recognize and avoid these types of attacks. Absolutely. And have you thought about utilizing any behavioral analytics tools for detecting anomalous activity on our network? That's a great idea. It would provide an extra layer of protection against potential threats. Glad you think so. Any other ideas you'd like to bounce around? Well, I was thinking we could potentially implement some network segmentation to limit the spread of any potential breaches. Yes, that could definitely help contain any incidents and minimize the damage. Exactly. And I think it's important to emphasize to our users the importance of reporting any suspicious activity to our team. Couldn't agree more. It's all about creating a culture of security awareness. Right. At the end of the day, it's all about staying vigilant and staying ahead of potential threats. Amen to that, eh? Thanks for coming in and sharing your ideas. Let's work together to make our network as secure as possible. Hello there. Welcome to Sydney International Airport. Are you here for business or pleasure? Hi. Thanks, I'm actually here for a business trip. I have a few meetings to attend in the next few days. All right, great. Do you have any transportation or accommodation arrangements planned yet? 
No, I actually haven't planned anything yet. Do you have any suggestions? Absolutely. We have some excellent hotels and transportation services for business travelers. Do you prefer a certain area to stay in? Not really, as long as it's convenient to get to and for my meetings. Okay, how about the Central Business District? It's a hub for many businesses, and there are plenty of hotels and transportation options available. Sounds good to me. What are some of the best hotels in that area? There are several great options, including the Four Seasons, the Shangri-La, and the Westin. Would you like me to make some reservations for you? Yes, please. That would be great. No problem. And for transportation, we have taxis, public transport, and rental cars available. Do you have a preference? I think I'll go with a rental car so I can easily travel to all of my meetings. Sure thing. I can reserve a car for you and have it ready for you to pick up at the airport. Thank you so much. This has been very helpful. You're welcome. It's my pleasure to assist you with your business travel arrangements. Enjoy your stay in Sydney. Hey there, B. How's it going? Hello, A. Pretty good, thanks. How about you? Can't complain. Hey, so I hear we're both working on the energy efficiency project for the company. Exciting stuff. Absolutely. It's a huge project, but I think we can nail it with the proper data analysis. I couldn't agree more. Speaking of data, have you had a chance to run any initial analyses yet? Yes, actually. Based on the data we collected, it seems that the heating and cooling systems in the office buildings are responsible for a large chunk of the energy consumption. Interesting. What do you suggest we do about that? Well, I was thinking we could use predictive modeling to optimize the performance and scheduling of these systems based on factors like weather and occupancy. I like that idea. How would we go about implementing it? We have to collect more data on those factors and then work on fine-tuning the algorithms to find the optimal times to heat or cool the buildings based on them. Makes sense. I also think we should look at the energy usage patterns of individual employees and devices to identify any potential areas for improvement or optimization. Agreed, that could definitely help us target certain areas for energy savings. Plus, we could use that data to incentivize employees to be more energy conscious. Good point. Hey, have you heard of any innovative new technologies that could help us with this project? Actually, yes. I was reading about a new kind of energy-efficient lighting system that uses machine learning algorithms to adjust the brightness and color temperature based on real-time feedback from sensors. Wow, that sounds pretty impressive. Do you think it could work for our company? It's definitely worth looking into. I'll do some more research on it and get back to you. Sounds good. Hey, speaking of research, have you checked out any online resources or platforms that could help us with our data analysis? Yes, I've been using a few different tools like Tableau and Power BI to visualize and analyze the data. They're pretty user-friendly and have some powerful capabilities. Nice, I've heard good things about those tools. Hey, one more thing, have you considered the potential impact of our energy efficiency improvements on the company's bottom line? Absolutely. By reducing energy costs, we can not only help the environment, but also save the company a ton of money in the long run. Exactly. I think it's important that we emphasize that to our colleagues and superiors when we present our findings. Agreed. This project has the potential to make a real difference both financially and environmentally, and I'm excited to see what we can achieve with it. Same here. Let's get to work and make it happen. Good afternoon, sir. Have you been drinking today? No, officer. I haven't had anything to drink. Can I please see your driver's license and vehicle registration? Sure, here you go. Thank you. Do you know the speed limit on this road? I think it's 60 kilometers per hour, is it right? Yes, that's correct. And do you know how fast you were going? Sorry, officer, I'm not really sure. Well, you were actually going 70 kilometers per hour in a 60 kilometers per hour zone. I'll need to give you a ticket. Okay, I understand. Please sign here and you can pay the fine at the police station or by mail. Sure, thank you for letting me know. Do you have any tips for staying safe on the road? Of course. Always wear your seatbelt, don't use your phone while driving, and make sure to stay within the speed limit. Thanks for the reminder, officer. Is there anything else I should know? Just be aware of pedestrians and other drivers on the road. And always drive defensively. Got it, I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for your help and stay safe. You're welcome. Take care and have a good day. Hey B, have you heard of ISO 27001? 
Yeah, it's a standard for information security management, right? That's right. Have you worked with the change control process in ISO 27001 before? Not much, but I remember it's about managing changes to the system, right? Exactly. It's a crucial process to ensure the security and reliability of the system. So, what's important in the change control process? Well, there are several steps to follow, such as identifying changes, assessing the impact, approving and testing the changes, and then finally implementing them. Wow, that sounds like a lot of work. What happens if we miss a step? That's a good point. Missing a step can lead to unintended consequences, like introducing security vulnerabilities or system malfunction. Okay, I see. So, what are some tips to make the change control process smoother? One useful tip is to maintain good communication between stakeholders, like IT staff and management, to ensure everyone is aware of the changes. That makes sense. What about getting feedback from users? It's also a good practice to involve users in the testing phase to ensure the changes will not affect their work. Got it. So, what happens after implementing the changes? After implementation, it's important to monitor and review the changes to ensure they are effective and address any issues or errors that might arise. I see. Thanks for explaining all that, A. You really know your stuff. No problem, B. It's important to keep up with these things to stay secure and keep our systems running smoothly. Good morning. Are you ready for takeoff? Yes, I am. But before we go, can you please explain the safety instructions? Of course. First off, make sure your seatbelt is securely fastened. In the unlikely event of turbulence, keep it fastened until it's safe to move. Got it. What about the oxygen mask? If the cabin pressure drops, the oxygen masks will automatically drop down from above. Secure your own mask first before assisting others. I see. And what if we need to evaluate the plane? There are emergency exits located throughout the cabin. Follow the illuminated path and slide down the inflatable slide towards safety. Thanks for letting me know. I feel more at ease now. No problem. Safety is our top priority. Do you have any other questions before we depart? Actually, I do have one more question. Do you have any funny flying stories to share? Oh, I once had a passenger who refused to turn off his mobile phone during takeoff. We had to circle the airport until he finally turned it off. That's hilarious. Thanks for sharing that with me. I'll make sure to turn off my phone. You're welcome. Enjoy the flight. Hey there. How's it going? Good, thanks. I've been working on this new development project all week. That sounds interesting. What's the focus of the project? It's all about quality control and supervision for our new system. Ah, uh, I see. Is that something you have experience with? Yes, I've been working in this field for quite some time. How about you? I'm a bit new to it, but I'm eager to learn more. What kind of measures do you take to ensure quality? Well, first of all, we do a lot of testing throughout the development process. We also have a team dedicated to overseeing the quality of our work. That sounds like a comprehensive approach. Have you ever run into any issues with quality control? Of course, it's inevitable. Sometimes we encounter issues that we couldn't have anticipated. But the key is to always be proactive and find solutions quickly. I can imagine that could get pretty stressful. How do you handle that pressure? It's all about staying organized and keeping a cool head. Plus, it helps to have a great team to work with. Definitely. Speaking of teams, do you ever involve the end users in your quality control process? Yes, we often get feedback from end users during our testing phase. It helps us to ensure that the final product meets their needs and expectations. That's a great idea. How do you facilitate that communication? We use a combination of surveys, focus groups, and direct feedback from user testing to gather and analyze information. Interesting. Do you have any tips for someone who is just starting out in quality control? One thing I would recommend is to stay curious and always try to learn more. And don't be afraid to seek guidance from more experienced team members. Thanks for the advice. I really appreciate your insight on this topic. Who knows, maybe we'll end up working on a project together someday. That would be fantastic. It's always great to have a new colleague who's passionate about quality control. Hey B, do you have any tips for testing software? Of course. First, we need to establish a comprehensive testing plan. I agree, let's make sure to cover all of our bases. And we should prioritize testing for stability and security. Absolutely, those are top priorities. 
We should also perform unit tests, integration tests, and regression tests. Good point. We want to catch any potential issues early on. Exactly. And we should also consider user behavior and test for usability. Right. We want to make sure the user experience is intuitive. Additionally, we need to perform load testing to test for any bottlenecks or performance issues. That's important. We don't want the system to crash under high traffic. And let's not forget about testing for compatibility with various devices and browsers. Yes, we want to make sure everyone can access the software without any issues. Lastly, we should always perform security audits and penetration testing. Agreed, we need to make sure the software is secure from any potential threats. So, that's our plan. Anything else you want to add? No, that covers everything. Thanks for the tips, B. No problem, A. Let's get to testing. Hello there. I believe you are the logistics officer from the freight company? Yes, that's correct. My name is Brian. And you are? My name is Alex. I'm the harbor manager here. We are constantly looking at ways to optimize the transportation of fish that comes in and out of this harbor. That sounds like a great initiative. Can you tell me what kind of fish are being transported from here and where they are usually sent? Sure thing. Tuna, salmon, halibut, and cod are among the popular types of fish that get harvested in this harbor. These are normally sent to various parts of the country as well as exported to other neighboring countries. Interesting. We could probably work out a system where we use container trucks and air cargo transport to ensure that fish is transported quicker and to reach further destinations. That could work. Also, we could introduce temperature-controlled containers to maintain the quality of the fish. It'll ensure that the fish remains fresh and avoids any spoilage during transportation. That's a great idea. We could also look at designing packages that can maintain the right level of moisture and temperature for fish to ensure that they stay fresh. Yes, and we could explore shipping routes that minimize the time fish spends in transit, especially for exports. It's our priority to make sure that the fish arrives in good condition. Awesome. We also have GPS trackers that can monitor the location of the fish during transportation, so we could perhaps link that up with your harbor management software to make transportation more efficient. Yes, that'll be highly beneficial. We're certain that our fishermen would be happy to know that we're doing everything we can to get their fresh fish to the market on time. Absolutely. It'll also help them to increase their customer base. Is there anything else that we should consider? I think we've covered the basics for now, but we should keep in touch as we progress in this project. It's a great idea, and we're both committed to making it work. Sounds perfect to me. Let's keep the conversation going. Hi honey, how's the sewing going? Hi mom. It's going pretty good. I've almost finished this dress. Wow, that looks great. You're really talented. Thanks, Mom. I've been practicing a lot lately. I remember when I used to make your clothes when you were little. You loved wearing the dresses I made for you. Yeah, I remember all those cute little dresses. I'm glad you taught me how to sew. Me too. It's a great skill to have. What are you going to wear that dress for? I thought I'd wear it to school tomorrow. Do you think it's fashionable enough? Of course. You look stunning in it. All your friends will be jealous. Thanks, Mom. That makes me feel better. Is there anything else you need help with? Well, I'm not sure how to fix this seam. It's a bit wonky. Let me have a look. Oh, I see what you mean. Here, give me the needle and thread. I can fix it for you. Thanks, Mom. You're the best. No problem, sweetie. That's what moms are for. I'm really glad we can spend this time together, just the two of us. Me too, honey. It's important to take the time to do these things together. Yeah, it makes me feel closer to you. I'm glad to hear that. You know, we should make this a regular thing. We can have a sewing night every week. That sounds like so much fun. But you have to promise you won't make fun of my wonky seams. I promise. And who knows, maybe I can even learn a thing or two from you. Haha, -ha, that would be funny. We can teach each other. Absolutely. Now, let's get back to sewing. We've got lots to do. Hi there. I'm a search and rescue officer. It must be exciting to be a marine scientist like you. Hi. Yes, it is indeed a fascinating field. But I imagine your job as a search and rescue officer must be quite challenging. Oh, it definitely is. Every rescue mission poses its unique set of challenges. We've got to be well-trained and well-equipped to handle them. 
I bet. Speaking of challenges, have you ever faced difficulty during the search and rescue of a vessel lost at sea? Absolutely. Sometimes, we get called in too late. The weather and sea conditions make it harder for us to locate the vessel or even reach it. I can imagine. But what technologies do you rely on to aid in your search and rescue operations? Our primary tool for search and rescue is the GPS system, but we use sonar systems, navigation charts, and other equipment too. Wow, that's a lot. Do you think there are any advancements in technology that could help with search and rescue operations? Definitely. New technologies can drastically enhance our rescue efforts. For example, drones could help us quickly identify survivors and dangerous obstacles in the area. That's fantastic. It looks like our work in research is essential to make the maritime industry safer and more reliable. Absolutely. And it's always great to build bridges between different domains to bring new ideas and solutions to complex problems. Indeed, it is. I'm glad that we had this conversation. I learned a lot about how your team operates during search and rescue situations. Likewise. It was great to exchange ideas with you. Here's to helping people and making the ocean a safer place for all. Hi there, can you help me out with the prices of some items? Of course. What items are you interested in? I'm looking for some snacks. Do you have anything that's on sale? Actually, we do. Our bags of chips are buy one get one free. That's great news. How about the chocolate bars? They're currently priced at $1.50 each, but if you buy three, you get one free. Hmm, that's a good deal too. What about these packets of gum? The gum is 99 cents each with three for $2.50. Thanks for letting me know. I think I'll get some chips, chocolate bars, and gum. Sounds like a good haul. Do you need a basket to carry everything? Yes, please. Can you also point me to the candy section? Sure, it's just down the aisle to your left. Great, thanks again for your help. No problem, happy shopping. Hey, have you heard of ISO 27001 malware? Yeah, it's a security standard for protecting against malware attacks, right? You got it. Do you think it's practical for companies to implement? Well, I think it depends on the size of the company and the level of risk they face. That's a great point. But do you think it's worth it for smaller companies to invest in it? Definitely, because malware attacks can be devastating for any company, regardless of its size. True. So, do you know what measures the standard recommends for preventing malware attacks? I think it includes regular virus scans, firewalls, and employee training to avoid phishing emails and malicious downloads. You're right. And how about after an attack occurs? Do you know what the standard recommends for recovery? I think it involves isolating the infected systems, identifying the source of the infection, and eliminating it before restoring affected systems. That's correct. I heard that a lot of companies have implemented the standard and seen positive results. Yes, it seems to have become a best practice for cybersecurity. Have you ever experienced a malware attack before? Thankfully not, but I've heard horror stories of companies being held ransom by cybercriminals demanding payment to release their data. Scary stuff. That's why it's important to always be vigilant and take preventive measures. Absolutely. Do you have any other tips or recommendations for protecting against malware? A good backup strategy is key, so in case of an attack, you can quickly restore your systems without losing data. And always keep your software up to date with the latest security patches. Thanks for the advice. It's always great to learn more about cybersecurity. Hey, have you heard? Last night, my family was talking about their favorite TV shows during dinner. It was so entertaining. Oh, really? That sounds like a fun conversation. What kind of shows do they like? Well, my mom is really into crime dramas. She loves shows like Criminal Minds and CSI. Ah, uh, I see. How about your dad? He's more of a comedy guy. His favorite show is The Big Bang Theory. Interesting. And what about your siblings? My younger sister loves reality TV shows like The Bachelor. And my brother is into sports, so he always watches ESPN. I can relate to your brother. I love watching sports too. Which sport does he like the most? He's a big basketball fan. He never misses a game during the season. That's cool. I'm more of a soccer person myself, but I can appreciate the love for basketball. Yeah, we all have different tastes, but it's always fun to hear about what shows people enjoy. I'm more of a sci-fi person. I love watching shows like Stranger Things and The Mandalorian. Ah, uh, I see. I'm more of a drama person. 
I love shows like Grey's Anatomy and This Is Us. Nice choices. I've heard good things about those shows, but I haven't gotten around to watching them yet. Do you recommend them? Absolutely. They're both really emotional shows that make you feel all kinds of feelings. That sounds perfect for a good cry. I'll have to give them a try. Definitely. And if you're ever in the mood for some laughter, I recommend Parks and Recreation. It's my all-time favorite comedy show. Oh yeah, I've heard that's a really funny show. Thanks for the recommendation. No problem. It's always fun to chat about TV shows. I'm glad your family had a good time talking about your favorite shows at dinner. Me too. It was a nice break from talking about daily life stuff. Yeah, sometimes it's nice to just talk about something lighthearted and fun. Hey B, how's it going? Hey, not too bad. How about you? Can't complain. Hey, I hear you've been doing some work with data analysis? Yeah, I've been trying to find ways to improve our sales strategies. That's great. I've been thinking about how we could use data to help us out. What have you been working on? Well, I've been analyzing our past sales data to try and identify patterns and trends. Interesting. Have you found anything useful? Yeah, I noticed that certain products tend to sell better during particular seasons or times of year. Ah, uh, that makes sense. So we could adjust our inventory and promotions accordingly? Exactly. And I also found that customers who buy certain products are more likely to also buy other related products. That's valuable information. We could use that to suggest related products to customers and increase our sales. Right. And I'm also looking at ways to optimize our pricing strategy based on customer behavior and market trends. Hmm, that's an area we could definitely improve on. Do you have any ideas? Well, I'm thinking of using machine learning algorithms to help us make more accurate price predictions and adjust prices in real time. Sounds cutting edge. I like it. Have you run any tests yet? Yeah, I've done some simulations and the results are promising. I think we should give it a try and see how it performs in practice. Agreed. Let's start small and gradually roll it out across our store locations. Good plan. And I'm also thinking of setting up a dashboard to track our sales data in real time and alert us to any anomalies or unusual patterns. Nice. That would definitely help us stay on top of things and react quickly to changes. Yeah, it's all about staying ahead of the game. And I'm sure we'll find even more ways to use data to our advantage as we keep exploring it. Absolutely. The possibilities are endless. Thanks for sharing your insights, B. I'm excited to see what we can accomplish together. No problem, A. Let's show everyone what we data nerds are capable of. Hey B, have you heard of the ISO 27001 Information Security Management System, ISMS? Yeah, I've heard of it. Why do you ask? I've been thinking of implementing it in our company. Do you have any experience with it? Yes, actually. I've worked with it in my previous job. It's a great system to ensure security in the workplace. That's good to hear. I was worried about the implementation process. It seems pretty complex. It can be a bit tricky. It's important to involve everyone in the company and ensure they understand the system. Yeah, I agree. Do you have any tips on how to get everyone on board? Well, it's important to have clear communication and be transparent about why it's necessary. You can also offer training and support throughout the implementation process. That makes sense. How long did it take to implement in your previous company? It took a few months, but once we got the hang of it, it was smooth sailing. That's not too bad. Did you notice any improvements in the company's security measures? Definitely. The ISMS helped us identify potential risks and vulnerabilities and address them before any major security breaches occurred. Wow, I can see why it's so important. Do you think our company will benefit from it as well? Absolutely. It's always better to be proactive with security measures rather than reactive after a breach. True. I think I'm convinced. Let's start planning the implementation process. Sounds good to me. I'm excited to see the positive changes it'll bring to our company's data security. Me too. Thanks for all your help, B. Anytime, A. Let's get started. Hi, B. Great to see you again. How's everything going? Hi, A. Good to see you too. Things are going well, but we have a problem with our website search engine rankings. Oh no. What's happening with the ranking? Well, our site is not appearing on the first page of search results for our targeted keywords. That's not good. Have you tried any SEO strategies so far? Yes, but it seems like they aren't working as well as they used to. 
Hmm, maybe we can try optimizing the website's content and metadata. That's a good idea, but we need to make sure that the content is also engaging and relevant to our audience. Absolutely. We should also consider building backlinks and improving the website's user experience. Yes, those are important factors too. But let's not forget about social media and email marketing. Right, we need to make sure that we are utilizing those channels effectively to drive traffic to the website. Exactly. And we can also analyze our competitors' strategies and see what we can learn from them. That's a great idea. We should also implement regular keyword research to stay up to date with our target audience's needs. Yes, and we can use tools like Google Analytics to measure the success of our SEO efforts. Sounds like we have a solid plan. Let's get started and see how we can improve our search engine rankings. Yes, let's do it. Thanks for your help, A. My pleasure, B. Let's stay in touch and work towards achieving our goals. Hey, have you heard about ISO 27001 authentication? Yeah, I do. It's all about keeping our data secure and confidential. Right, and I heard that it's a standard that helps organizations manage and protect their information assets. That's correct. It ensures that the information is accessible only to authorized personnel. So, how does it work? Well, it involves several steps like risk assessment, policy implementation, and user authentication. User authentication? Can you elaborate on that? Of course. User authentication is a process to verify the user's identity and grant them access to resources. Hmm, so does it use any specific technique for user authentication? Yes, it uses various techniques like passwords, biometrics, smart cards, and tokens. That sounds interesting. But what's the main objective of user authentication? The primary objective of user authentication is to ensure that only authorized personnel can access the sensitive information. Got it. So, do you think it's essential to implement ISO 27001 authentication in our organization? Absolutely. Nowadays, data breaches and cyber attacks are prevalent, and we need to take proactive measures to keep our data secure. I completely agree with you. Implementing ISO 27001 authentication can help us to stay ahead of the threats and protect our confidential data. Yes, and it also provides a framework for continual improvement and risk management. Wow, that's fantastic. I think we should start implementing it right away. Yes, let's do it. I'm sure it will benefit our organization in the long run. Hi, I'm a tourist here. Can you tell me more about the local marine ecosystem? Sure thing. Our oceans are teeming with life. There are so many different species of fish and other sea creatures here. That sounds amazing. What kind of measures do you take to protect them? We have a lot of marine conservation projects in place. For example, there are restrictions on fishing and some areas are designated as protected marine parks. That's great to hear. You really do seem to care a lot about the environment here. Yes, we do. It's so important to protect our natural resources for future generations. Have you seen any rare or unusual creatures in the area? Yes, there are many. We have sea turtles, manta rays, and even some species of whales that migrate through here. Wow, I didn't expect to see all that. It must be an exciting place for nature lovers. It definitely is. We also have coral reefs that offer some of the best snorkeling and diving experiences in the world. I'm sold. I'm definitely going to check those out. Thanks for all the information. You're welcome. Just remember to treat the environment with respect and care when you explore it. Hi there. It's nice to meet you. I'm really excited about discussing how we can use AI to personalize our education content. Hi. Nice to meet you too. I believe AI has immense potential in creating tailored learning experiences for students. Exactly. It's amazing how AI can analyze data and patterns to develop customized learning paths for each student. Yes, and AI can also adapt to each student's learning pace and style to ensure they are getting the most out of their education. That's a great point. I also think that AI can help teachers track students' progress and intervene when necessary. Yes, and it can also provide teachers with insights into which topics are challenging for students and where they need additional support. Agreed. I think AI can really transform the way we approach education and help students achieve their full potential. Definitely. And with the rising demand for online education, integrating AI in our platform can also improve the user experience and make learning more engaging. That's a good point. How do you think we can integrate AI in our platform? Well, we can start by collecting data on students' behavior and learning patterns and use that to develop personalized learning paths. 
We can also incorporate AI-powered chatbots to provide immediate feedback and support. I love that idea. I think it would be really interesting to see how students respond to the personalized learning experience. Yes, and with AI constantly learning and evolving, we can ensure that our platform stays up-to-date and relevant in the ever-changing world of education. Absolutely. I can't wait to start working on this project and see the impact it will make on students' lives. Me too. It's going to be an exciting journey. Hi. Nice to meet you. My name is A, and I'm a data analyst here. Hi there, A. I'm B, a business analyst. So, what do you think we should focus on in terms of market research and data analysis? Well, in my opinion, we should start by identifying the most important variables that affect a company's success, such as sales volume, customer satisfaction, and product quality. That's a good point. And how do you suggest we analyze all this data? It can be quite overwhelming. One option could be to use machine learning algorithms to identify patterns and correlations within the data. That way, we can identify factors that are most strongly associated with performance. Sounds like a plan. But how do we make sure that the insights we gather are actionable? I think we need to work closely with the business stakeholders to make sure that we understand their goals and challenges. That way, we can tailor our analysis to their specific needs. Absolutely. We could also use data visualization tools to present our findings in a way that is easy to understand and act upon. That's a great idea, B. I think that would be an effective way to communicate our insights to the wider organization. Speaking of communication, how do we make sure that we are presenting our data in a way that is compelling and engaging? One approach could be to tell a story with our data. Instead of just presenting numbers and charts, we can weave together a narrative that highlights the key insights and takeaways. I love that idea, A. Any tips for how to do that effectively? It's all about finding the right angle and creating a structure that builds suspense and keeps the audience engaged. It helps to think of it as a mini-mystery or puzzle that needs to be solved. That's great advice. I'm excited to see what we can uncover with our data. Thanks for your insights, A. No problem, B. I'm looking forward to working together and unlocking some valuable business insights. Hi there. I would like to make a reservation for a room in your hotel. Of course, sir. When would you like to stay with us? How about next weekend? I'm planning to have a little vacation. Great. Let me check our system. What type of room were you interested in? I prefer a room with a nice view, maybe facing the beach? We have several options available. Would you like a standard room or maybe a suite? A suite sounds great. How much does it cost per night? For a suite with a sea view, it's priced at $250 per night, sir. That sounds reasonable. Do you have any facilities in the hotel that I can use during my stay? We have a swimming pool, a gym, and a spa, sir. They're all open for our guests to use. Wow, that's fantastic. I can't wait to soak up some sun and work out a bit during my stay. Sounds like a plan, sir. I can confirm your reservation now. Could you please provide me with your name and contact information? Sure thing. My name is John Smith, and my contact number is 555-1234. Thank you, Mr. Smith. We look forward to seeing you soon. Good morning, B. How's it going? Good morning, A. I'm doing well, thanks. What about you? I'm doing well too. So, today we are here to discuss the market trends and the company's strategy. Yes, that's right. I see that our sales have been declining slowly over the past few months. What do you think could be the reason? We could analyze the data and try to identify the problem. It could be due to changes in customer preferences or maybe a competitor offering a better product or service. That's interesting. Do you have any suggestions on how we can address this issue? We could try introducing new products or services, or maybe even target new customer segments. It could also be a good idea to invest in marketing and advertising. I agree. Marketing plays a crucial role in attracting and retaining customers. It's important for us to create a strong brand image. Definitely. We could also try partnering with other businesses or expanding our offerings to include complementary products or services. That sounds like a smart plan. We should also consider the impact of technology on our business and how we can leverage it to our advantage. Yes, absolutely. Technology is advancing rapidly and we need to stay ahead of the curve to remain competitive in the market. I couldn't agree more. Let's work together to come up with some innovative ideas that will help us to achieve our goals and succeed in this ever-changing market. Sounds like a plan, B. Let's get to work.
Hey, have you ever been to Cairns in Australia? I'm thinking of taking a trip there. Yeah, I've been there a couple of times actually. It's a pretty amazing place. Oh really? Do you have any recommendations on what to do there? Definitely check out the Great Barrier Reef. It's truly breathtaking. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Do you have a specific company you recommend for tours? I went with Reef Experience and had a blast. They have a great staff and the boat is really nice. Awesome, thanks for the tip. What else should I see? You should also check out Karanda, a rainforest village in the mountains. It's a really unique experience. Sounds cool. How do you get there? You can take the Karanda Scenic Railway or the Skyrail Rainforest Cableway. Both are pretty amazing rides. I think I'll go with the Cableway. It sounds like a really fun way to see the rainforest. Definitely. And make sure to go for a swim at Karen's Esplanade Lagoon. It's a great spot to cool off and relax. That sounds perfect. I love swimming. Any good restaurants you recommend? For a great seafood dinner, check out Oka Restaurant. Their menu is full of interesting Australian dishes. MMM, that sounds delicious. What about accommodation? Do you have any recommendations for hotels or hostels? I stayed at the Northern Greenhouse Hostel and had a great experience. It's affordable and in a great location. Thank you so much for all the recommendations. I'm really excited for my trip now. No problem at all. Let me know how it goes. Hey B, are you ready for our climbing adventure today? Absolutely, I can't wait to explore these cliffs in Tasmania. As an experienced mountaineer, let me give you a quick tip. Always double-check your gear before starting. Safety first. Thanks for the advice, A. Hey. I'll make sure to do that. All right, let's start the climb. Don't forget to take breaks and admire the breathtaking views around us. The views are truly amazing. The clear blue skies and the lush greenery all around us are so refreshing. I couldn't agree more. And look at those cute little creatures over there. These Tasmanian devils are really fascinating. Oh wow. I've never seen them before. They're so adorable despite their scary reputation. Yep. And look at that challenging climb up ahead. We'll need to use all our skills and strength to reach the top. No problem, hey. I'm all set for some action-packed adventure. Great attitude. That's what I love about adventure travel. It tests your abilities and pushes you out of your comfort zone. I couldn't agree more. This is such a cool experience. I feel alive and energized. Glad to hear that, B. Let's keep going and make it to the top. We've got this. You're an awesome guide, eh? Thanks for making this trip so memorable for me. My pleasure, B. That's what friends are for. Let's enjoy the view from the top and bask in the sense of achievement. <laughs>